Welcome, everybody, to episode one of season three of Symmetry Backspace. Oh my god. It's gosh. been so long, but I'm happy to be back. I mean, it hasn't been that long. We had midseason, but it's been so long since I have been here in the upper left corner of your screen running actual cannon. It was Fight Fest, and then it was Nathan before that. So it feels good to be be back in my sacred space up here. How's everybody else back feeling? In my corner. Back in my bottom right corner. Feel good. <laughs> and then uh, Momo, with no character art at the moment, we're working on it, but that's because uh, if anyone didn't see the finale of the last season, well, <laughs> SG's not around at the moment. We had, we had character art. We did. We did. <clears throat> Whoa, all look right. at all those. Yes, okay, I'm, I'm Ooh, catching up I on everything it. here. Uh, hold on what? one second, chat. It's been a while since I've... I'm not seeing lag right now. Let's hope that continues. If there is, of course, chat, let me know. We'll make it work. I'm also seeing a ton of subs. Thank you to everyone who subbed. Thank you, especially Holy Cafe, for the whole bunch of gifted ones. I should also say, shameless plug, but it is a bit. Uh, and this will actually this will segue nice into uh, the next thing I wanted to say. Interestingly, uh, this is the first thing that I have DM'd for Backspace uh, since graduating college. This is my like job now, and it feels much weirder to be the DM. When, like, this is my real job and the main thing that I it's, do. So, yep, yep. one, you should sub to us because if you sub enough, I can get a PC and stop running this stupid show off my Mac. Uh, <laughs> but two, on that note, uh, I just want to go ahead and talk a little bit about the the ethos that I'm going for in season three. Like I said, this is uh, this is the first thing I'm doing as, you know, a D&D show as an actual quote-unquote professional DM who is doing this as his job. So, uh, I am going to try to go... So much more all in on all the writing, right? Because I feel like something that I love in world building is, you know, eclectic worlds where things can do, a, they can handle a lot of different genres at once and blend that all together nicely. And with the theming of symmetry, which is something that's seen throughout this whole campaign, my sacred duty now is symmetry of tone, right? If you've seen the first two seasons, you know there's a lot of weird, funny goofiness and a lot of very scary stuff. And I'm doubling down on both of them. I'm doubling down on wacky comic book nonsense, and I'm doubling down on the existential horror, and my goal is to hold these in as perfect balance as I can so that people will hire me to write for their other worlds so I can get narrative and world-building jobs. But that means I'm taking it so much more seriously than I have. Not that I haven't before, but we got more lore, we got more world-building, it's gonna be fantastic, and I'm super excited for Backspace overall. Uh, yes. Yes. How utterly terrifying. I love it. Thank you. Yes, that is what I'm going for here. Uh, what do we want to... What Let's do... Oh, we got... I, I wrote down a yeah, list. Yeah, Momo did a list. What next? New merch. Matt, talk All about right. the new merch. Uh, we do have new merch in the store. Uh, I'm going to say two and a half things right now. Uh, we have the Backspace logo. Uh, I'm not going to pull up a picture of that because it's on the screen right now we have sure tooty stickers i believe for that same thing that we have for all the other designs uh if you go to the merch store which will be linked in chat someone already mentioned it i've seen the cryptic merch i want it so bad there is cryptic merch that i uh i have not revealed yet i knowing my audience predicted that a certain group in season three would be popular and i went ahead and did merch of their little insignia they might be revealed today we'll have to see they might not not sure exactly where the players are going to go. Uh, the half that we have is a design that is not currently up, but I am... This is only for people who watch Fight Fest. If you didn't watch Fight Fest, this isn't going to make any sense. I am right now coordinating with Mike, Mike Funny Boy, for the Cool Rolf is Dead shirt. The Cool Rolf is Dead shirt is happening. I'm hoping to have that up by next week because we're, we're doing the design <laughs> there. Uh, now, there is another secret surprise, though, which if, if you guys... You guys are not watching the uh, the Twitch stream. I would like you to tune in right now because when I was putting all the new merch in this morning, uh, I realized there was something else that I could do that I hadn't done. Mm -hmm. And so naturally, without asking anybody's permission, I just went ahead and did it and added it to the store. Um, <laughs> oh, no. So we do now have glib oh, pants no. that you can buy. Oh, what? my God. You oh, my God. We do, we so do now have glib joggers <laughs> that are available for purchase. Um, I wish oh they were cheaper. God, I will genius. fully apologize. They are not. They are not cheap. But that is because Teespring's joggers are, I guess, really high quality. I would have made them cheaper if I could have, but I literally cannot. But yeah, we do. We That's do really now have good. glib pants available genius. for purchase. So, uh, and again, I had not told That's anybody this. Good. So those reactions were 
Those were authentic. That's so there you go. Wow. Where can we find those? <laughs> that is all on our merch store, which if it's not linked in by, it's our, hey, Nightbot. Oh, now, that was Mr. Autobot. Thank you. The link to that has just been dropped in chat. Uh, all our links will also be rotating around like every 10 minutes. You can find them in the link tree on our TikTok bio. There's a bunch of places. Wow, look at all this merch. Yes, we also do have, uh, of course, merch from other stuff. If you're new, we have merch from the previous two seasons, character art merch, uh, business venture merch. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, and I was just say, like, it specifically goes to the person who um, who made the character. So, like, if you get merch with a certain character or, like, business venture stuff, that supports more the player who has that character. So it is for, you know... Whichever characters you enjoy, it helps support the players a lot, and it is a good way to help us out. Speaking of ways to help us out, Momo, that's a segue for the Patreon if you want to cover that. Oh, right, yes. A way to <laughs> yeah. help us out, you could subscribe to our Patreon. We have a $1 tier, and we have a $5 tier. $5 tier is where you're going to get another plug. Our after show still ooh, does ooh, not ooh. have a name. <laughs> Did we not name it? Like a the full after season. Show. It's just the it. after show. I can it's come up with something show. good. Wait, let me. I'll, I'll, be <laughs> I'll be thinking. I'll be thinking. Thinking about it for a very long time, and we still do not have an after show name. So it's just after show. Can we just spell it a really can, stupid we way? We can call it backstage. That's genius. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I came up with it. How long? Only now, just, for, how long. just for this season, though. Well, yeah, but this is this is the final season of Symmetry. Not this. Yeah. I'm gonna scare everybody with that. Not necessarily the final season of D and Dorks. It's too far out to confirm that. But I will say, this is the end of the Symmetry arc. There will not be a, like season four of Symmetry. So I'll tell you that much. That'll maybe scare people. After and then our last our last big announcement. I feel like Matt, you should announce this one. Uh, wait. What? The thing that we won, but we didn't oh, know we right. won. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, well, it was CBR, right? I should have a link to it on CBR, hand. Does anyone yeah. have a link to it on hand? Uh, I don't. So uh, we were very honored to find out that we were named number one on a list that CBR made of most underrated D&D actual play shows, uh, which is fantastic. Yes. I'm amazed that we got this. We actually did win this in September. <laughs> And somehow <laughs> didn't it. notice until last month because we're very good at our jobs. <laughs> but thank you to CBR. I mean, nobody told nobody us. Told nobody us. Told no. Us. Nathan, can I say why we found out? Because it's really funny. Yeah. We found out because Nathan was Googling his own name <laughs> and <laughs> happened to, to see this article come up. Uh, but yeah, so thank if, if anyone from CBR is watching, thanks. That was pretty cool. Thank Sorry you. we found out so late. Um, but that was yeah. that was if anyone has a link to it, like Text it to me or put it in the, the Skype or whatever, and I'll... Oh, there um, it is. Um, oh, Archie already got it. Nice, Archie. Thanks. And in honor and thanks for us getting number one most underrated D&D podcast, we want to thank all of you guys for supporting the stream, because we wouldn't have gotten it without you guys. And I also wanted yeah. to shout out um, another stream that I think is super underrated. Um, it's called... Wow, what is it called? It's called Please Don't Kill Us. It's a an interactive D&D actual play podcast with a group hmm. of friends. I don't know where they're from. I think New York. Um, I'll post a link to their YouTube because they stream um, on Thursdays, 6 p.m. No, 7 p.m. Eastern. And it's a really fun idea. Like the audience can um, in, can decide certain choices during the stream. Hmm. And it's really interesting. That's I cool. think their first season was like the Salem Witch Trials. Their second season was like they were all fruits. And what? now <laughs> I think right? The and now I think they're doing like a spell jammer campaign. If you're really into that kind of stuff, they have the same kind of chaotic energy as us. So if you want something to watch on Thursdays and you're not a critical role person, check out Please Don't Kill Us on YouTube. There you go. There right, you go. Let's see, let me look at the chat as we go. Oh, um, hold on, Momo. I saw you put a link in chat, but I don't think you're oh, you're yeah. modded, so it did not, or you're not a mod, so it did not go through. Uh, you oh, are okay. now you are now a mod on my channel. Use your oh, power okay. as well. Uh, you can Thanks. send links. I I also don't know, uh, Nathan Panda. If you guys want to be mods, you can. And I mean, Nomo immediately yeah. poked like six buttons. <laughs> oh, I did. You... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> 
I don't, I, did, I, did I do it? What did you, okay, Momo cleared chat, enabled one month followers only I mode, did? enabled I'm 30 so second sorry. slow mode, disabled followers only mode, and then oh, enabled fuck. one second. Jesus I don't Christ. know if you guys can see that on the chat, and she, I gave Momo mod powers, and she immediately did seven different commands in the chat. Hopefully. I'm so sorry. How the fuck did you even do that? How did you do that? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Nathan Penn, if you say something in chat, I'll look for your usernames and, and mod you when I when I, I say come up. Okay. Regardless, did the link even go through? Yeah, the link did go through. We did do that. Somebody, some people were saying that I sound quiet. I, I, I don't know got if that's that as Momo thing. was talking. Okay, I hope, cool. Hopefully, if I need to turn Nathan up more, I can. But I, uh, Sweet. I did poke at that while Momo was going. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Uh, all right, I got Nathan. All right, what was I? I, I forgot what I was saying in the in the. Momo abusing her power crisis. Uh, Sorry. Is there anything else we need to go over? I think that's pretty. We I did. Think so. We did the merch. We did the Patreon. We did the shout out thing. Um, I think that's. I think that's it. Are we good? I think so. All right. Mm. Oh, I did want to say someone else said that, that they liked the logo. Thank you. I'm. I like this one as well. I wanted to go for a uh, a Back to the Future inspired thing. So that's what the. the uh, the ethos of this logo is. I was like, yeah, I want to do a Back to the Future vibe. Um, I think I accidentally gave everyone mod privileges. No, no, no way you have the power to do that. I, I no know. way you have the power to give everyone mod <laughs> privileges. Know. That would be... But n- now it's emote only mode and I didn't set that. Uh, Archie and Amy, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I don't, I'm, I'm so gonna just sorry. yell at my, my mods. Stop touching the goddamn shit. Oh my, my god. Mods. We'll fix it. Archie and Amy, you guys are in charge now. <laughs> I am begging you to stop touching the fucking. Oh, I, really, I didn't put the back. That's what I forgot. I didn't put the backspace logo in as a Twitch emote yet. I'll do that later. That was a not urgent thing to forget. Ugh. Everybody watched as Matt granted one of us mod powers and then immediately decided to never do that. And again. I like how we, this is after all the, the uh, intro stuff too, so this is going to be like on the recording. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, yeah. anyway, that's, hey, that's thematic. So uh, with, with that crisis out of the way, we can get started. I say this mostly jokingly. Anyone want to take the recap or, or should the DM do it? Ah! Should the DM handle that one? DM. I figured, though I guess, I, mean, I did kind of prepare for this, I should really at least do a brief recap of, like, everything, right? I should do a very brief recap probably. of, like, the whole series. So, welcome to season three. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to season three. I did promise that this was going to be an entry-friendly thing, and you'll kind of get why when we get to the end, because, well, you'll get why. Uh, so, we started this show, like, a year ago with The Symmetry War. Uh, season one of the the symmetry campaign, almost to the date. Yes, to yes, the date. two a year, year three hundred sixty four, three hundred sixty four days ago. We started April first, twenty twenty two. Yeah. Uh, and that campaign. Depending on how late this goes, it might be three sixty five. God, I will <laughs> say, with what I've planned, I hope this doesn't go six hours. But oh well. Uh, we started about a year ago. With, uh, not this cast exactly, with uh, Momo and Panda, yes, but we had Nikhil Clayton instead of Nathan Apollo. Uh, And that starred a group of three adventurers who were not friends. We'll just go ahead and say it like that. (laughs) They were uh, sort of thrown into an adventure together in the stereotypical D&D sense, but unlike many parties, uh, did not hit it off right off the bat and sort of just got dragged along with each other uh, very, very quickly in this adventure to uh, discover the origin of a mysterious portal that was under a city called Riftreach. Uh, One of them, specifically Momo's character, SG, got teleported into the Chaos Realm by licking a magic crystal, which, you know, don't worry about that. That'll that'll matter later. Uh, But when Momo, SG, was in the Chaos Realm, she met this terrifying eldritch horror centipede monster man named Polnaros who seemed to be a a character who would be the primary villain of the campaign. But as things progressed and they opened the portal into the Chaos Realm, it was revealed that Polnaros, the god of chaos, uh, was actually not an evil force and had been sort of manipulated by forces in the Chaos Realm uh, after being stuck there for a very, very long time, which had given him a sort of magical amnesia and twisted his body and given him all sorts of weird magical powers. 
at this point, the uh, mm-hmm. the goal of the campaign became mostly to fix Polnaros, to try to get him back to normal by bringing him out of the Chaos Realm uh, and into the opposing Order Realm, which hopefully would stabilize his magical mutations. Uh, and this did actually work. But unfortunately, in the process, uh, the group unleashed the Order God, who was actually the true villain, wanting to sort of uh, bring everything into to one form order the world in a way that he saw fit and could control. I I did not know Magic the Gathering lore at the time, but now I do, and I would compare it to New Phyrexia if there are any Magic the Gathering people in the chat. Uh, but they were able to defeat him. But upon his defeat, they learned that there were more than two gods in this world. The world of Vontral, which became more of a, a larger location in Season 2. There were actually eight different gods, or specifically eight magical thrones existing in eight elemental planes. And whoever sat on these magical thrones would be given godlike powers. Uh, This, of course, then became the main goal of Season 2, which was entitled God Force. Uh, Finding these thrones and the portals to the other realms scattered across the the flat nation of Vontral. That's an important thing. The world of Vontral is flat. Again, that'll matter later. Uh, In the process of this... The characters were all given godly powers themselves. If you guys kind of... I'll throw it to you guys. You mm-hmm. want to describe your god powers and real quick? Yeah. Um, something got <laughs> fucked up with me immediately. And uh, I, did, I did not get the original chair that Matt probably <laughs> I, assumed I I Correct, but I had a plan for this. Which was the, the chair of wealth. And uh, that ended up going to SG. I believe, what was the specific name of uh, mine? Was it yeah, you, Order? So, uh, no. It was, it was Law, it was, I believe. Was order this, was like yes. the yeah. So, so uh, every, there are eight thrones that are aligned to sort of primal forces that can be described as uh, classic earth, fire, water, air, and then the more esoteric life, death, chaos, and order. But uh, in... <laughs> In order to not absolutely shatter the minds of any mortal that sits on the chair, the powers are not all granted at once. They are granted in the form of subdomains. And whoever sits on the chair is given a, uh, a subdomain yes. sort of fitting to them. And so Goodbit sat on the order chair and was granted the power of law. Law. And then I got a cool white suit after that. And I got a bunch of cool little law uh, powers. He did. And now, since you mentioned SG, I'll do SG's. Next, because SG is, again, not around anymore. SG sort of ended up stealing Goodbid's originally possibly intended chair, becoming the god of wealth, uh, which was, if anyone was curious, an earth subdomain, because, you know, gold, gems, comes from the ground, things like that. Uh, But then the other god in the party, Glib, had a fitting, a fitting power, I would say. Uh, Glib became the god of death. Um almost like on a dare like it, it very much seemed like he was just like I, yeah I, I guess we'll sit in it why not mm-hmm. and and then he became the god of death i don't really have i mean we haven't been really able to see his god powers yet because i haven't been put into a state where i can use them yes so um mechanics wise i'll go ahead and say mechanics wise glib's powers as you might, might expect activate more when he is close to death so there's more situations, that, you know, when that happens. Uh, but There's only been one time that I've almost been able to use my power, and then someone had to fucking come and save me and take away my ability to use my cool yeah. powers. Uh, now, I fully <laughs> forgot we don't know what your power is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That has not been said yet. I'm just a little darker now. I know. My character's, like, skin is a little bit darker, and he looks weird. And I think I can see ghosts, <laughs> and I think that's about it. I have six sense powers, and I look like a corpse. That's a all I can really describe without us going too deep into uh, it. By the way, if you guys are uh, in chat are wanting like character descriptions, personalities, and stuff, we'll do that sort of once we actually start and this recap is done. So don't worry, we will get there. But along this journey to find these uh, these magical thrones, the prime thrones as they were called, the group met many friends, many enemies, uh, most of which, most iconic friends at least, are played by other content creators who we had on as guest stars. We've had a ton of people, if you go back and watch previous episodes. Uh, some of whom may or may not be returning. That has not been coordinated yet, so don't get too excited. But I know there's people wanting to return, and we have a slot open for anyone who wants that. So mm-hmm. guest stars will be happening in Season 3, I can tell you that much. Uh, but for the purposes of this campaign that we'll get to in a moment, I think the most notable allies are Captain Mercury 
a merman with two yeah. prosthetic peg legs, essentially, strapped to his tail, who is an air god, specifically the god of travel. Uh, and he's also connected to uh, a sort of character along with him, the flying pirate ship Sky Skimmer, which was later modified. But again, we'll get there in a bit. Uh, the next important ally would be Callisto. Callisto, uh, the most powerful mortal on the plane of Vontral, by far. A very, very, very ancient wizard. The party's original quest giver NPC. Uh, and I, I don't remember if I said boyfriend or husband. I don't remember at all, but well, I'm just, screw it, I'll say they're married. Uh, there's a little lore drop if I didn't say that before, I'll do that officially. <laughs> and husband of Polnaros, later Prophet, the Chaos God who got super mutated. Uh, the next important ally would be Doc, a time traveler from the future who is the resident expert of time travel, or at least he thought he was. Again, we'll get there. And finally, uh, Emmy, a character who was a, a a breakout hit, I think. I admittedly did not expect Emmy to be as popular as uh, as he was. Emmy is the god of secrets and is essentially a child who was cursed to a, an isolated existence when he was given his power. Seeing as being the god of secrets, there are uh, you know sort of magical metaphorical nonsense that keep other beings from perceiving him properly. However, due to other magical nonsense, uh, Glib and the party was able to do this, leading to Glib kind of adopting Emmy and becoming one of the fan favorite characters in the audience, I think. Everyone in chat's already freaking out about Emmy. Uh, however, there were two other enemies, and I'll make this quick. Uh, there was Raelius, a psychopathic monster god, who ended up becoming a, a bit of a pawn for the real foe of God Force, the god of dreams, a man named Callum, who had been driven insane over years of having this dream power without the ability to properly control it. Uh, he never knew what was real and what was an illusion. Uh, so it drove him to madness, and he sought to unite the powers of the gods so that he could destroy all of reality himself along with it. And in doing so, because uh, he did succeed in doing this by manipulating sort of the good and evil groups at the same time, he brought to Earth a primal force known as the Blank, beings of nothingness. I believe I described them as sort of invisible creatures in a sense. They are viewed as humanoid outlines of black and white. So, you know, if you look at them in space, you don't see them, but there is a... Uh, imagine a filter placed over the world in the shape of a human body, where everything that you see through it is monochromatic. Uh, except for a glowing white star-like eye in the center of their heads. Uh, these beings have the power to destroy anything they look at, seemingly with no limits whatsoever. And at the behest of their uh, sort of overlord, they were doing this to the world, meaning the dream had, uh, had effectively completed his goal. But thanks to time travel nonsense on the part of Doc and the party, they were able to modify Mercury's ship, the Sky Skimmer, into a time machine, now known as Time Skimmer, uh, with the attempt to travel back in time and stop Dream from getting the powers before, you know, all this nonsense happened. Uh, in the process, they had an encounter with a being, as of now, simply known as the God of Nothing, who killed SG for, uh, well, for making uh, jokes in his presence, essentially. <laughs> Uh, but they were able to escape. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? I don't think killed gets across how horrifying it was. He just looked at her and she was That's gone. also true, yes. Just, <laughs> he non-existed SG. Like, just gone instantly. Uh, but the, the rest of the group <sighs> was able to escape. But instead of arriving in the past of Vontral, as they thought they were going to, they popped out in a very strange place, somewhere that the players had really no frame of reference for, this being a fantasy campaign, but I just, uh, or the characters had no frame of reference for, this being a fantasy campaign. Uh, but I described to the players and the audience as some sort of space station, just floating in the void of nothing. Uh, a structure, the origins of which are still largely unknown, named Backspace. Uh, see, time travel in this world is broken because the god of time is dead. And therefore, uh, yep. backspace is essentially where all time travelers from all timelines have ended up as they try to save reality. Uh, the blanks are an inevitability. They come to Vontral. Some people sometimes make it out and loop back to the beginning, where they land in backspace. 
backspace and the rest of time then flows forward as normal leading to another world where more travelers circle back in this endless cycle leading to many variants as uh, the MCU has popularized, uh. Uh, popularized the term and many other things that will be revealed over the course of this session and this season. But there are two interesting factors in backspace that of course we will explore more today. Number one, uh, the person that runs it, this being seemingly from the very little that he has appeared on screen, an adult version of Emmy, the god of secrets, who seems far more, as far as you know, evil inclined in some sense. Definitely a darker figure than the somewhat innocent child that the party has adopted. But also, uh, Momo, Momo's new character is there. Momo, you, you care to go ahead and describe your... We'll, we'll segue into character description now. Go ahead and describe Bello for us. So Bello is a chaos butterfly who actually became friends with Ka with Canyon in the chaos realm when he was trapped there. Um, Canyon being Bello's Nikhil Clayton's all... character, for those who are new. Yes. Uh, Bello's not got a lot upstairs. Um, really thought for a, so like a solid forever that flowers that stars wore flowers and was on a search for flowers, but was really looking for stars. That's why he couldn't find them. Um, went out into the <laughs> ether of, what was it? Uh, from underneath Fondrel, went out and became sort of like a star eater. Oh. Um, uh. Ended up with the team, with <laughs> B team for a bit. That fell apart. And now was a kind of in a, how would you even explain? explain that kind of like in a a walkabout in the stars it's and got hit around. by time skimmer yes or at the time sky skimmer mm -hmm. it was a time skimmer at that time it was time skimmer right? bello got bello basically got smacked against the windshield of time skimmer as it was exiting yeah. the time stream <laughs> yeah and now is here apparently isn't supposed to be in backspace yes. or never has been before I'll, I'll cover that one uh now this yeah. is important for one major reason that being that Bello has never been to backspace before. There are alternate instances, again, variants, I'll just use the common term, variants of glibs, variants of good bids, variants of SGs, and pretty much every other character that's been shown in the series. Not necessarily all, but many. But Bello has never made it back there before. Which is extra interesting, because Bello was identified by a, an AI system in backspace as a god himself, specifically the god of space, a being thought long dead and one of the few that might have the capacity to actually undo the cycle of destruction that Vontrell has been going through for a very, very, very long time. Bello was just as surprised to learn this as everybody else. So no one really knows what's going on there, but the point is this crew uh, is different. Bello has been brought through, and that means that this iteration of the cycle is is somehow altered from all the previous ones. Uh, and that is another good segue into the person who is most excited about this alteration and the hope it brings, Mr. Goodbid, Nathan. <laughs> yes. Howdy, y'all. Mr. Goodbid back again. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, at the end of the finale of God Force... Um, we we find out exactly what you just found out is that Bello has never been here before, and so that is probably the single. Goodbit likes to think he's different from the rest, but now he has physical proof that he is that their situation is. SG just fucking vanished and died, and Bello in Goodbit's mind is the key and maybe to he everything. Is. Maybe he is. That's good oh, thing. I also do want to disclose. I have no idea what Bellow's god powers are. I don't. That know. is also important. Uh, when I say that, when I say that the space god thing was just as much a surprise to Bellow, it is also just as much of a surprise to Mo. I know, I know how it works, but that'll be revealed as we go. Uh, and then that would be. I don't have a nice little segue uh. for this one, lore wise. Uh, Panda, give it. Give us the glib. Uh, give us the glib description. <laughs> yeah, the last. Um original member of the party on this, uh, <laughs> on, on the ship. Um, Glib's not doing great. Uh, the, for anybody who's, who's new, uh, Glib is a former, uh, wizard school human who was cursed to be a frog creature 
uh, and is also a vampire, and is now also a god of death. Um, lots of things going on for this little frog. <laughs> lots of little things going on. He he has not lived a good life because uh, before he was a frog creature, he was also the most unlucky human being to ever live. Um, this this entire campaign has been essentially people befriending him and then dying in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it is a pattern. Not doing. <laughs> There's a, there's a continuous pattern, and he's not handling this very well. Uh, at the at, Oh, right. He, yeah, that's someone pointed out in the chat. Also, there's a continuous joke of him not being able to wear pants because he secretes a very slightly acidic mucus from his skin. If you were there at the um, beginning of this, that's... that's Hold on. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll bring up the picture again. That's surprisingly again. lore important yeah, for why he's even that's been a That's <laughs> been a bit from the beginning, and it is why this is now a product that you can get on our merch store. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he is... Uh, he's not handling this whole uh, time travel being stuck in, in a, in a mm -hmm. pocket dimension very well. Yeah. Um, because he he is one hundred percent dedicated to the idea that, that that we can fix this that this the yeah we can go back we we had a plan we had a plan we need to stick to the fucking plan because if we don't stick to the plan uh SG's dead Canyon's dead yes uh the entire world that we are all on is gone yes and we're stuck in a pocket dimension and he does not like that very much oh yeah also uh, adult Emmy kidnapped what was essentially his yeah I was uh, gonna I was gonna child kid. kid. So, yeah, adult Emmy rolled up and was like, yeah, I'll take that, and then fucking dipped. Um, he's not doing he's not doing great. He's in a very deep state of denial uh, at the at the end of last season. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, don't be confused. We are all traumatized. Oh, yeah. We're all deeply, deeply well, traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> Except, I want to start from Bello. Me, me and Gliv are like two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. I am going immediately into like, Bello is the key. Mm. I feel good now. Glib is is See, spiral. We're already <laughs> deeply. We're the already game. getting this thing I wanted, which we did. We did sort of a, we did symmetry of one thing versus another. You know, two sides, chaos versus order. We did a radial symmetry bit with the eight different forms, and then backspace. We're doing more tonal symmetry, opposing ideals, opposing themes, and we're already starting to get that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. But yes. Yeah, I think I don't. I think the only thing we didn't mention was what the original plan was. Did we? Original Where plan our was original to... plan was to go back yeah. in time. Um, go back and kill the uh, god of dreams before he yes. could uh, sit on the throne and, and become yeah. the god of dreams. Mm -hmm. Our original plan was kill him, so then this never happens. And apparently, every other version of us also thought <laughs> of that plan, and it has literally never worked. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> never if, once. if I mention, if I forgot once. to mention anything important. Please jump in. That was me trying to recap two seasons, mostly improv wise. So, um, other than the last like five minutes stuff. of the finale, yeah. which which is a separate thing, so I'll get to that. What's our uh, for mm. for anybody who's new? What's our kind of interpersonal uh, dynamics? Because I know uh, that like Glib very specifically is is not very close with the uh, with Captain Mercury at all. Yes. Is very close with Emmy. Right. Doesn't out. really know who Bello is at Here, all. Let me um, they're not gonna it's not gonna look super professional, I'm sorry, but I will I will bring up the character art for everybody so that you guys who might be new and yeah. are not watching on Spotify. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Oh my goodness, where's Oh right. We also have two goblins on board who uh, just are kind of <laughs> yeah. there. I think is one of them a god. I don't remember what happened. There. I remember. Yeah. Wait, who's the other one? I remember Sticks. Is, is? I remember. Yes, yeah, Sticks is a god. It, yes, it, it, Vakhtan. Yeah, so for the ship. context of that, we did an Im a holy improv episode god. called uh, "Oops, All Goblins," which became canon. It, it's a whole. Th I don't have time to talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, just type in Oops All Goblins into YouTube and watch that chaos. Surely, it was an episode I was not in thing? because okay. I, got, I got violent food poisoning in the middle of the stream. And they had to come up with yeah. a whole new idea. It was a funny episode. Anyway, On the fly. we'll talk about that. We'll talk about like the structure of the show for anyone who is new. Yeah. I'm going to do it like, as, on the break. We'll talk about that so that we hook yeah. people in. So, uh, for sure. The last, like, five minutes of the finale. I'll go right there. You guys had just uh, landed the time skimmer in backspace. You've been given a mm -hmm. slightly more detailed, uh, you know, version of the, the recap speech that I had just given you in regards to backspace, what it is, how it works, etc. Uh, at which point, Emerald had showed up 
taken uh, young Emmy without asking, of course, to parts unknown. Uh, and then we cut right as you guys were uh, were leaving. We oh, just, we just oh, lost his Panda. computer died. <laughs> oh, his computer. Okay, his computer blue screened. He's it's restarting. <laughs> well, well. Uh, sorry. Hold for like five more Let's minutes. Talk about character dynamics. So good vid. Um, good vid originally got hired to kill the entire party. Actually, um, uh, yeah. Radius? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something stupid, and I'm just gonna take this opportunity to run to the bathroom really quick while we're waiting. So you, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute my camera. Right, you guys go. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm a professional. Good good vid lore. Yeah. Um, Goodman originally got hired by Raelius. It was just a contract job saying like, yo, if Raelius is like life ever seems in danger or he goes missing, I'll get a call. I'll kill whoever we think is responsible. So that's how I met the gang. Um, that's how I met, uh, yeah. SG and, and Glim. I will say like out of uh, character, I was just like, who is this dude coming in and fighting us <laughs> out of nowhere? <laughs> Like what? Like, he came in with the worst vibes. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I was honestly worried that that would be the vibe forever. It's just like fuck this guy because the only reason I end up joining is because they forced me into a contract with no loophole, saying I have to help them. Um, and then I did. You know, we saved the world. That was Cemetery War. Um. And then time passed, God Force comes around. And now, you know, of course, through our adventures, we're kind of acquaintances now. I wouldn't say we're friends, um, but we all kind of became acquainted. And then got called back by... Um, who called us all back together? It was... Uh, oh, I think we, it was Calypso that called us all back together. If because we all got like Doctor Strange into a portal. What episode, so, what what episode was, is what was this? The... Where, where are we at? So, episode one of season two. What brought us all back together after we uh, saved the world? The after first you time? saved the world the first time, I believe. Yeah, um, I think it was Prophet specifically went back and grabbed yep, you guys, yep. uh, and he uh, basically he, he got you to investigate the the God Force energy. He he sort of rallied the team back after like a week. Yeah. And so then after all that happened, we went through more trials and tribulations. Um, discovering how the world works, discovering how gods work. We became closer as a group. Hey, he's back. Um, there was a touching moment. Ah! Hello. There was a touching moment where Glib saved Goodvid's life. Uh, and, you know, we're all kind of a little found family mm -hmm. now. Um, that being said, then SG died, and then Bello shut up. And I, Goodvid also has no idea who Bello is. Never er, met Bello once when Canyon yeah. attacked. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, no Canyon really is turned evil, by the way. <laughs> that was yeah. probably, Canyon yeah. Did not turned evil. Basic. Canyon was always evil. We were just like, Fair. it's just sort of a weird In guy. denial. Brief on that. <laughs> it's uh, just this thing. Canyon was Nikhil Clayton's original character, but then Nikhil had to drop out of the campaign because of scheduling conflicts. Uh, but he came back in season two and was an antagonist and was like a boss fight for, for a big group. Yeah. And fuck us. Yeah, the only time Glib we has were... almost actually died is because Canyon fucking impaled him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole mirror maze. <laughs> yeah. It was like a ghost guy. It was a whole thing. That was an anyway, um, where were we before before Panda Panda's computer did a no? Uh, you were about to lead us into the right. last okay. moments so, of yes. the finale. Last moments of the finale. You had landed in back, uh, in backspace on the time skimmer. Emerald had showed up, said some cryptic things about how he runs the place, and then taken Emmy. Uh, and then... I believe we left off right there with you guys uh, just going to leave the door of the, the little dock that you were on and go see what Backspace is all about. Yeah. And we are going to pick up right there, like to the minute. Uh, if I, again, remember correctly, which I should because I rewatched the last half hour like an hour ago. Uh, it was <laughs> that most of the NPCs were going to stay back with the ship, figure out what was going on. And then you three were, uh, were leaving. Yeah. So. And we were, I think we were just actively, I think we had just walked through the door um, to wherever. In that case, space. you walk out of the door. Uh, you've seen this it's space station from the outside, of course. I believe I described it as like a like a fractal thing. If you've seen those fractal videos zooming in, it looks a lot like that. This place is big, and there's obviously some trippy geometry going on. But as you open the door that Emerald came through, uh, you don't see any of that. You see a much smaller room uh, that seems to be sort of like a waiting room or, or like a, an intermediary room 
Just very plain, very boring. There's another hallway on the other side, but in here, uh, there is a desk with a few chairs, and then on the other side, uh, just some, just a regular human just sitting there, seeming to be waiting for the arrival of you three. How many desks? How many desks? No, not desks. How many chairs? How many chairs? Uh, let's say let's say two, just to make it funny that there are three of you. Oh, okay. That's that's not a cryptic thing in right. any sense. This is just a normal room. Are we talking normal in a sci-fi sense, or are we talking normal in like a like two thousands office building, beige paint on the walls, and and like a humming light above you? Um, I would say like a little sci-fi room where everything's metal. I would say a, a more metal room, not like I'm not going for back rooms here. It okay. is it is okay. mundane in right. every sense is, is what I'm going for. Mm. Maybe a little bit okay. weird to you guys because your fancy characters in a big metal box, but to to the to the audience, and the yeah, players, yeah, yeah. it is very mundane. Secondary question: How tall is the table? How tall is the table? Uh, <sighs> how tall is my desk? Uh, I two two. And a half feet? I don't know. I don't know how long a foot is. Okay, so Glib's eyes are here. Probably. It's a normal desk. <laughs> the height of a normal okay. desk is. I just want to make sure if he has to hop onto a chair to talk to this person like a toy. No. Uh, oh, I also want to say that <laughs> Bella was the same size as Glib. Yeah, it's a very good bit. You're now yeah. the tallest Terrifying. in the party. Uh, I'm the tallest. I'm with two mythical creatures it's, it's on either a, side of me. It's a, a tall, a, normal. It's dude. like a demon frog, a chaos butterfly, and then a guy. <laughs> That's the party right now. <laughs> and then a guy with a really and a nice sharp mustache. Suit. Uh, that's um, it. Um, okay. I'm I'm gonna walk up to the to the desk, and just his eyes poking above it. And, uh, who the fuck are you? Uh, the uh, person kind of looks up at you again. Nothing really remarkable. This seems to be some sort of some sort of office oh. worker. Uh, uh, well, okay, fair. You know what? No, they're. You know what? They're looking at a tablet in their lap, and then they look up. Is that what okay. you wanted, Pant? Right. That, that's uh, better. That's better. The person looks <laughs> up at Glib and says, "Oh, uh, I'm just your your legal agent here to work out some of the intricacies of of your specific case, given the circumstances under which you arrived." That's our legal guy, and I point back at uh, at Goodbid. Uh, You're our legal guy. Circumstances under which we uh, arrived. Yes, see, you all have a, a a rare, not unique, but rare element to your arrival in that you seem to be familiar with someone who runs the facility, and they You're do phrase about it like that. Kidnapping my kid. The when Glib says uh, says that person kind of does the stereotypical lawyer like mm, well not exactly uh, see I I wouldn't mm. phrase it like that this is going to be d difficult by nature but we don't talk about it well why not we all just watched it happen why wouldn't we talk about it for the security of backspace as a whole due to the metaphysical safety protocols. Uh, everyone inside has agreed to a, a, a protocol called the Absence Accords, which states that anyone who is aware of things that could jeopardize the security of backspace in this specific manner is barred from talking about them under any circumstances regardless, lest those security measures be compromised by the metaphysical nature of the discussion. Okay, fuck this. Uh, Glib immediately walks so around is... the table. <laughs> like, just tries to get to the other side of the room. <laughs> okay. So we're in a dictatorship is what I'm hearing. Again, it is more in a metaphysical sense than anything else. This is not about control. It is purely about safety. If I could explain right. it, well, I would, but it, once yeah. again, I cannot speak of it. it. It's complicated to say the least. Yeah, there is a door on the well, other side of the wall. Well, you just said that people inside are allowed to talk about it, but we're not inside, so you can talk about it. It, uh, well, for legal purposes, the boundaries of backspace are everything contained within the metaphysical barrier, separating our existence from our non-existence. Oh, brother. I don't know about any of that. And he's currently <laughs> rattling a handle. He's trying to open the yeah, door. Bob. And you are rattling that handle. It is not open. <laughs> mm. You know, you you think we traveled to an extra dimension. The one thing we could leave behind is lawyers. <laughs> hey, legal. Yes, yeah, sa uh, says the legal. lawyer. <laughs> That's the lawyer. <laughs> ah, I guess. Ah, guilty as charged. Uh, Glib, as he's like rattling the handle, looks back and goes, "You legal dude. Uh, you got keys for this? I am capable of opening the door once our business is handled, of course. You have keys. Oh, then. we're conducting. I business. wouldn't use the word. I 
and have access to the door. Your your timeline, I believe, follows a more of a medieval sort of pattern. You'll get used to it. I don't know what that word means. I didn't expect you to. <sighs> We're not evil. No, not, not what you're... Well... You calling me short, big guy? Yeah, uh, hey, Glib's not mid, okay? He's this, just... Ar perhaps archaic is a better term. That, that does sound rather offensive. You'll, you'll get the hang All of right. it. Look at me. <laughs> How do you open the fucking door? Once our business is handled, I will go ahead. Well, could you tell us what you need to tell us, this so we can get a move After on? After the business is handled, how does the fucking door open? It's that simple. How do you open the door? Uh, the person, realizing that Glib is not going to get off this, turns to Goodbid and says, Well, I actually have gone ahead and already told you. You have been... Did you just fucking ignore me? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Uh... The person kind of, like, talks louder and faster trying to get through this, knowing that it's the last thing. <laughs> We've already discussed all the business. As long as you are aware of the Absence Accord, you are, uh, of course, set to go. You have been informed, and I would not advise uh, breaking this informant in any case. I'm going to look right at Goodbit and go, Goodbit, are you going to stop me? <laughs> Give it one second, Glib. Real quick, what are, what are the ramifications for if we do break this Accord? Uh, um, I'm not... Sure. Cool. I would like to leave. Just as long as you understand that there will be ramifications of some kind, you are free to go. Uh, and then the person... There's going to be ramifications well, you just if you don't turn pushes, <laughs> uh, person pushes something on their tablet, and the door slides open. I don't know, I mean, someone said Panda's volume was a little Fantastic. low. Fantastic. Do, do I still have my tablet uh, that I got given yes, by some computer guy? Yes, you do have a tablet guy? that you were given by some computer what was, guy. What was that guy's name, Alfredo? Uh, I, I went back because the name that for the, the AI was Artie. And Artie, fun fact about this, it. I was like, that, surely I made that an acronym, right? Because I've done that before, but I could not for the life of me think of what Artie was an acronym for. And I watched the episode back, and the thing said it didn't have a name. And Bello just said, how about Artie? <laughs> so, yeah, so thanks, yeah. Momo, for making me doubt myself as to what, why I named I was like, why did I call it this? And it was a totally arbitrary decision that I didn't even make. It's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um... <laughs> As the door opens and Absence we're like, accord. going that way, Glib says, you have no idea how lucky that man just made you. <laughs> uh, as the door opens, I assume Glib especially is going to be running out as fast as possible. You enter... Uh, more well, walking quickly. Walking, walking, walking quickly. Getting out fast is essentially what matters. Storming. You enter, again, something I'm going to say a lot this session, a place that the characters have no frame of reference for, but I will describe as... Uh, very much something that you would uh, see in, in a sci-fi movie, sort of like a spaceport. Uh, there are some people coming out of similar rooms to you. You can see entrances to garages with various ships and stuff. Uh, some are open, some are not. Uh, you see ships... Actually, give me a perception check. First roll of the campaign. Give me a perception check, everybody, and I'll give you your exact details. Hey-o! Alright, this dice is gonna be rolling hot. I, again, I'm not a physical dice person, but I was gifted these pretty yeah. ones, so let's see. I should, be, I should use nice. my... My uh, honor among thieves one for the whole <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got what is Bello good for perception? 18. Uh, I also got an 18. I got a. What does Bello add to perception? I got an 18 as well. 18 for hey! everybody? Whoa! Wow. Woo! We're all on it. Oh, while we were describing dice real quick, uh, someone sent me these forever ago. They're clear dice with a tiny version of my logo in That's them. That's sick. That's so nice. Cool. Yeah, someone sent me like personalized Dude, dice. And I send, love me, send me a, a close picture of that. I want to see this. That's very sick. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so everyone got an 18, so everyone sees kind of the same thing. Uh, as you look around, you can see these sort of garage door bays, like the, what the time skimmer is in. The one that you just came out of is closed. But there are many that are open, and you can see a variety of, you presume, other ships. Some of them do look relatively similar to the Time Skimmer in some sense, but some of them look completely alien. In fact, not like any vehicles you've ever seen. You just kind of can assume they're ships given where exactly they are. Uh, but in front of you, rather than being enclosed, the place opens up into a large courtyard-like area. It is actually sort of a town square-esque, but of course more of a modern town square, even a futuristic town square, than what you're used right, to. Lots right. of uh, lots of metal, lots of lights. Uh, there are plants, there are you know trees and natural areas in this uh, area. It resembles mostly, out of what you've seen, the Order Realm, I would say, because the Order Realm is more futuristic. However, one right. thing that is uh, worth noting, since you've gotten 18, there are 
no windows to the outside of the station at all. The ceiling is enclosed and seems to have some sort of lights that function as an artificial sky, but you cannot see space outside anywhere, even back in the spaceport. It is all 100% closed in. Uh, and you can see, again, once I'll say this a billion times, like I said, something that the characters don't know, what seems to be a sort of futuristic light rail system. You see these strange boxes ferrying people to and fro out of tunnels that branch sort of out of the, the sky box, for lack of a better term, of this courtyard. It is very, very, very large, and there are all sorts of beings wandering around. Beings that you recognize as you know the same sort of species as you've seen in your world, and then again, things that you don't. And this is where you've been dumped. You are free to explore as you will. <sighs> Welcome to Backspace. Can we... S- can we see anyone that we recognize? Like, actually recognize as in versions of us or versions of people that we've met? Uh, looking around, I'll, I'll, you all got an 18, so I'll give you that. Uh, you see, uh, as you pass, there are people that look, again, similar to you. There are changelings. Uh, actually, there are changelings. You don't see an SG immediately, but you do see changelings. No bellows, of course. Uh, there are a few frog people among the uh, the group. You don't know for a fact of, you know, you have to get closer to see if it's uh, glibs or not. Uh, right. There are, though, wandering around in, uh, you know, suits, which makes them more noticeable. There are oh, versions of Goodbid. Uh, not like a notably high amount, but I would say that Goodbid stands out very much, you know, among this. Goodbid's fashion's pretty iconic around this world. Mm. Uh, and then again, there are many other, other things. Iconic. As for, like, quote-unquote villains of the series or other NPCs. It's a very crowded area. You would have to look in detail, but the one that stands out the most okay. in this area is Good Bits. Great. <laughs> oh, man. I tried to think how Good Bit would react yeah. to seeing himself. Do they have better suits than me? Can I roll I would say it varies, but, I mean, we'll say they have... Are there suits? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You just I'm got not... out of time traveling and you let your ego play here? <laughs> I'm not going to say better necessarily. I will say they are more futuristic in style. Whatever you imagine. But I will say they also run a range, right? There's uh, a lot of them are more futuristic in style, but there are also things that sort of align more with your aesthetic and aesthetics that you do not recognize. Right. Interesting. Fashion oh, yes. Very wide here. range. Um... Glib is, uh, ironically, doesn't even look at the frog people. He scans to see if there's anyone that is not currently in his party. Uh, and then he starts looking for the tallest building, because he's going to try and do the same shit that he did in Season 1, where they're trying to find Polnaros by going to the biggest fuck-off tower. <laughs> and trying to... I was going to say, is this like a room, or is this like a massive area? Uh, like, like... Town are we in an square. enclosed city, or are we in a big room? So, think of it as sort of like uh, a, a very, very large dome. In the center of this dome is a more natural space, kind of like, think sort of a Central park And That's kind of what I'm going for. Is think, think a sci-fi right. space station version of, like, Central Park ringed by Manhattan. There's a natural space in there, and then there's a dome going over the sides. There are buildings all around the sides, and a few in the natural area, but the buildings pretty quickly integrate into the walls of this dome. And then I guess there's, I would assume there's doors to yes, go there's the there's into... the light rails that take you to tunnels right. that go into okay. separate areas. And got again, it. the space Got it, got it, got it. Which is pretty open into the area. All right. Do I see anything that, like, stands out as, like, a big fuck off scary tower sort of thing? I'm trying I'm trying to look for, like, the or, the, the order tower that that was in Rift Ridge. Uh, I would not say that there is anything uh, exactly of that, but we'll say just opposite the spaceport, straight on, directly past the natural area, there is a building that seems uh, more ornate. There are more sort of colors on it that seem to be, not like, you know, artistic, but think of sort of a United Nations kind of thing, where there are like things that you seem to identify as different insignias and and symbols that would be relevant to that. It Mm. does seem to be likely some sort of administration or government building, whatever serves that purpose here. Gotcha. Wordlessly, Glenn starts going that way. Out of character, did we ever even discuss what we want to try and do? That would be a question for you guys. I don't think we did. I think Glib just said, I'm going to go and get Emmy back and then started walking. I, I don't... Yeah... I don't think we – do we want to out of character right now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean – to discuss what we want to try and do? I'll, I'll explain. Glib's motivation right now is just to get Emmy back uh, because his plan right. goes get Emmy back, 
get back to Time Skimmer, get the fuck out of here, do the plan. That's four steps. There's no... Right. He doesn't care about any of the shit that's being explained. He does. He's. This is just a, a bump in the road. This is not a different thing. I don't think. Hmm. G- Goodbid was never that close to Emmy. That was no. kind of like actually, I would go as far as to say Goodbid kind of avoided getting. Which close I should to note Emmy. for any new people wow. is valid. Emmy during your whole like crisis. Emmy is like, a child, and yeah. Emmy is very scared a lot of the time. But Emmy also did at some point in his past murder a whole city. Emmy is is yeah. concerning, yes. and validly so. Emmy is concerning. Mm-hmm. I think I think in the front of Goodbid's mind is, I think similarly to you is getting to a place of power, making sure Bello comes along, and just finding out what we can. Um, yeah. Did did Mercury and them say they were like, did our ship get busted down as soon as we got here, and they're like trying to fix it because they had like they had like to figure out the whole yes, physics I, of that the, was, this uh, place. That was that was one of the reasons I went back and watched the last thirty minutes. The exact way that I described it is you took Doc, who I actually don't think I meant. No, I I briefly mentioned Doc in the intro. Uh, mm-hmm. One of you went with Doc down to look at the the time travel parts of Time Skimmer, and the the wording that Doc used was the physics are different than they were twenty minutes ago. And Doc is, and Doc yes. presumably at this moment, if he's not having some sort of existential crisis, is with the help of Mercury and Callisto and whoever else is helping, trying to figure out uh, who or, or how exactly right. they can sort of align, how or if they can align the time skimmer to whatever this place is. Figuring out physics yes, from exactly scratch. That. Got it. Gotcha. So um, I, I'm, I think I'm equally looking for some sort of government building or some sort of place of power that we can head to. I don't understand why so, everyone's it, just looking for stuff. There are plenty of people to ask. Excuse me. I just go to the nearest oh, person. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm looking for Emerald. Where can I find it? Hold on. Let me let me get like a random. I'm uh, sorry. Glenn wasn't like, listening, right. but I was. Wasn't like the one rule you don't fucking say is. It, yeah. What? I'm sorry, what exactly? What exactly did you say specifically? <laughs> say it again. I'm, lo- I'm say it. looking for Emerald. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then it, it, like, it actually very, very much no, matters no, no, no. what I roll here. So let me let me see here. Um, let me. Oh no, my fucking god. I'm actually gonna roll this digitally. I'm actually gonna roll this digitally. Uh, let's see. I'll do. What's the ratio that I want to go for here? We'll just say that. God. That's statistically uh, that well, is statistic- I hope you got a new no, character I'm not gonna ready. do that, but I here's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, <laughs> all right, um I'm rolling a nat twenty. If you get a one, then it's someone who knows what you're talking about. Guess what happened? <laughs> Guess what? what happened? Uh so yes, uh you go up to uh by pure coincidence, uh a good bit. Or there seems to be a good bit. And this, uh, this guy. good bid, we'll say it's a, a good bid wearing a, you know what? I'll do a, I'll do a bit. This good bid is, uh, is wearing a green suit, uh, and has a golden glove on one of his hands. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> That's a bit. Don't worry too uh, heavily about it. Uh, uh but <laughs> this, this uh, good bit. Bello recognize this as a good That's bit? a good question. I don't know what Bello's facial recognition is like. <laughs> how how uh, face blind is Bello? That's a nat twenty, so yeah. Okay, so Bello do- Bello knows right. exactly, Bello remembers exactly what years. what this good bit is. Yeah. Uh, and, and give me the exact line that you said again. Excuse me, I'm looking for Emerald. Do you know where I can find him? Something like that. Uh, the good bit kind of stares at you for a second before his like trying to seemingly you know parse what exactly you are. Uh, before his eyes go wide at the at the mention of that name and actually i think he just kind of like books it like he just starts speed walking away as fast as he possibly can oh everyone come you along coward. he's taking us to him let's go <laughs> following him no no i don't you're splitting up immediately because i, I want to stay the glib has not stopped for any of this <laughs> If you can, you can. Bello, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think they're trying to help. Are you sure? Bella. He seems pretty eager. I don't, I, I think he, I think he seems a little scared. I think he, uh, I think we should just keep to ourselves a little bit until we know more. 
like a like a like a secret uh, club. Oh, a secret club! As, I've never been a part of a secret club. As the good bid, call it the cool kids, cool club. kids club. As the good bid walks by, good bid, you hear him <laughs> muttering under his breath, "Is bad business, bad business, bad business." <laughs> <laughs> Just that's all, over that's and all over. Good Ben needs to hear to be like, that's a bad yeah. idea. I, <laughs> some, some bad shit's gone down. Right. <laughs> I tell Bella, I'm like, and I hear the cool kids gl- mm-hmm. club is going over to that building oh, over there. We got a meeting to attend. So let's catch up to our buddy Glib. And I start walking us all back. All right, let's go to the cool kids club. Why <laughs> Bella's <laughs> so on board now. Uh, so you guys are, are going to that uh, that. Some sort of government building. All right. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We're following. Uh, unless you guys are looking for anything yeah. specific on the way, I'll just say that you know, descriptor as I gave it, kind of a futuristic space station enclosed version of New York City and enclosed by or Central Park enclosed by Manhattan. Uh, eventually, though, it takes a, a little bit. This is a big area. You arrive at the entrance to this building, which is once again covered in symbols and insignias that you mostly do not recognize. Uh, though I will say one thing, and this is something I should have asked Nathan beforehand, but I did not think so. If Goodbid had like a business empire, oh God. what would the logo yeah. be? Completely oh hypothetical. Yeah, completely hypothetical. A mustache. It'd be some sort of mustache. Um, uh, all right. Sure. So I'm going to say. That's the one thing that's uh, consistent. Because he might not always have a bottom hat. Like then I'm going to say that uh, one of these, the, the one that is uh, most easily recognizable to you, is a, uh, a mustache. And I, this might change if I decide to graphic design this later and can't make this look good. But for now, we'll say it's a mustache, uh, the ends of which sort of curl up into a G and a U. Hmm. Is this like on a plaque yeah, these, somewhere? Or, these or, are or, again roughly. They they ser- seem to serve the same rule that like flags outside of the UN do. So Interesting. It's a, it's a notable thing, uh, and I assume you guys are going in. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the cool uh, we gotta. <laughs> the cool you kids enter club. A, again, this is a, a sort of futuristic lobby. I imagine that this has a more sort of brutalist aesthetic. Uh, if you guys know the game Control, if anyone knows the video game uh, Control, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, very different than the outside. More more brutalist, more blocky. Uh, but there is a some sort of strange sort of silver creature, a uh, silver being at a desk uh, in front of you in the lobby. With, again, above them, all these different insignias uh, against the back wall. And a standing... Uh, you, you know, players would know it as a robot. This is a robot manning the desk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've That's seen true. Yeah, it before. is. Yeah, I forget that War Force is right It's It's more futuristic than that, but yes. Right. Uh, Glib walks... Is this, like, on an elevated platform? Again, I need to know where the tables are, only because I, that's, like, Glib's intimidation I factor. would say that this desk is higher, because this is, like, the lobby of a very, very official government building, so it is, like, much nicer. Uh, and, yeah, there's right. a person sort of yeah. standing behind this. And there are people, you know, milling gotcha. about the lobby. This it's is a populated um, area. Great. Glib's gonna walk up to this elevated platform, looking straight up uh, at this elevated platform desk, probably hidden by it, to be perfectly yeah. honest, uh, and just goes, Warforged, you! Uh, Where's the guy in charge? The robot, uh, it pauses for a second, and you see, like, some flashes on the... It has, like, a blank face. Uh, no facial features whatsoever. Oh, you see some, robot. You see some, like, little flashes on it uh, that mm. seem to register your sound input before a, like very generic sort of like two eyes mouth face appears in lights a pack, just like a <laughs> smile uh and it looks down and goes if you are seeking a warforged i can provide you with a directory that's that's not did, you i'm talking to you where is the boss the boss of which faction if you have a meeting scheduled with any faction Action. affiliations any faction higher ups will need to be made an appoint. Will ah, I can't talk. We'll say the robot's glitching. Yeah. <laughs> to meet with the heads of any <laughs> faction, you will need to have an appointment. Yes. Hello. We've Where been invited we? to the Cool oh. Kids Club, so if you could just point us okay. in that direction. Good. Ah. What the fuck did you tell the bug? Don't don't worry. But look, we almost had a problem, and I fixed it. Okay? I don't know what this Listen, is. Listen, where are we right now? Uh, this is the headquarters of the Faction Association for Backspace. 
cool. And how many factions are there in uh, Max Payne? That is a number that I have not 100% settled on yet because it is <laughs> theoretically a very, very large one. So I'm just going to say there are, like, a lot. There's, like, at least 30 symbols up there, but you mm-hmm. don't know exactly how major they all <laughs> are. I want, sure. I want to just say, just because so, I'm assuming we're probably going to cut them off. Can this just be like the fucking TikTok audio that count how many sand is on this beach? <laughs> and it just starts <laughs> listing off names and we're like, hey, what? Do, what? damn it, it's just going to keep doing yes. it. There's, though. Okay, okay, new question. Which which one is the most powerful? Uh, the, uh, the robot kind of calculates or th- thinks for a second, just... Power is a difficult thing to measure, of course. There is a lot of metaphor and calculations to be calculated with that, and then sort of makes, like, a very awkward, like, chuckle sound that is very obviously pre-recorded. And then it goes, Are you speaking of political power, economic power, security-based power, military power, intellect power, Mm. researching power, Mm. scientific power? It it continues off on this, just, like, all the different things that, like, you would expect a group to be specialized in. Agricultural power, (laughs) transportation power, Good bit at this robot. Uh, I'm gonna break it. Poli- uh, just give me a give me a some political power, please. Political, uh, the uh, preacher gets sort of turned more to look at Good Bid very robotically, and scans goes. Given that you seem to be a designation Good Bid, I assume that your interest in political power would align most with Good Bid Unlimited LLC. Good Bid Good Unlimited what? LLC. Oh. God, they uh, uh, then this thing continues, uh, and it scans over to Glib. It says, Glib designation does not have a stereotypical faction that they often use. However, given the magical energies that are coming off your system, I would assume that you would be most likely aligned with the Necrocephali. And then again turns to oh. Bella. Did the robot just sneeze? <laughs> the thing turns to Bella and, like, freezes for a second. And it, clearly, this this little scan is doing it's it's doing a lot more on the systems than the other two have. Your designation is not recognized, but given the nature of your biological form, I would assume that you are a creation of the Chaos Orthodoxy. Well, I guess so. <laughs> that sounds a bit about that, right. Is that where the Cool Kids Club is? <laughs> that is where the Cool Kids Club is, Bello. You're absolutely correct. Just a fancy name uh-huh. for it. Um, okay, I th- <laughs> Glib's gonna tug on uh, uh, Goodbid's pant leg real quick and be like, "Hey, let's uh, huddle up." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Come here, Bella. <laughs> cool kids meeting. Um, in in our little circle, uh, Glib's gonna be like, "Okay, so new plan. You keep a leash on the bug because I'll eat her, him." <laughs> them that uh, i'll eat i'll eat the moth also, also yeah, yeah, understandable <laughs> he, <that's>, <laughs> still <laughs> he's not here right now <laughs> yeah i am uh, in the huddle <laughs> my wings are just like on <laughs> each of us apparently is designated to a different fucking club up here yeah. i say we meet back in front of that fucking door we came out of in an hour, let's, let's okay. go talk to these fucking groups. Figure out what we can. Let's meet our people, huh? If you can find the big guy, find me immediately. You got it. Um, do I have... Oh, fucking SG is the one that had sending mm. a message. Um, we'll... I'll find you. I'll find you. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to you before we do anything. If we run into trouble. Good, Good plan. I will try not All to right. kill anybody. Um, um, I believe in you. Uh, I turn back to the robot and go, uh, can you give me directions to Goodbit Unlimited LLC headquarters? Uh, the robot sort of gestures at your, uh, at your tablet that you have for you to like hold it up. Oh. Uh, and places a hand of you know on it uh at which point you hear some beeping noises and it seems that a locational data is is been and you can now see a map uh though i will say the map does not seem to go beyond this like little courtyard area that you're in it seems that good better limited headquarters is here oh um i 
I'm going to ask as well. Uh, also, excuse me, do you happen to have one of these tablet boxes for my buddy here? The uh, the robot, yeah, we'll, we'll say the robot provides some under the desk and provides this. That's not good. Don't need to make that all over. Right. Thing. <laughs> now, is there... Is there any possible way that we can communicate with each other through these boxes? Uh, the robot, again, sort of asks to hold up, and uh, I won't roleplay the the scene. I won't roleplay the IT scene, but, you know, have you ever tried to teach your grandpa how to use an iPhone? <laughs> Does your grandfather also yeah, have on, hilarious me... anger issues? Because I can't imagine teaching Glib, like... You need to click the bubble. What fucking bubble? What? This isn't a bubble. It's a screen. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me try to do it by myself. So I click this circle. Oh, what did I just open? <laughs> oh. I, I think you opened a camera. Cam is that me? I think, I think that's us. Oh, how my the, gosh. How did I get trapped in this box? <laughs> oh. The robot, to its credit, it waits very out. patiently. 30 minutes of that. Glib is, the, Glib is the type of person who is just trying to tap the screen harder to get it to work, and it is not <laughs> so working. Funny. There's like four busted <laughs> tablets in front of At least one has been smashed oh with gosh. stick. <laughs> Wait, do I still... I don't... You I have, have stick. Stick's in the fucking... Oh, true. Uh, yeah, you're right. Stick, stick, is, stick is integrated at the moment. Never mind. Great. So, eventually, I'm going to assume we yes. figure out how to... I don't know. Up to you. Are we allowed to call, or is it only? I'll, like, I'll say you can call again. I've, I've, I'm doing more world building this season, but I'm gonna save my energy on not not sci-fi iPhones. <laughs> I want I want it for flavor to say we only like FaceTime like grandparents, where it's like just the body yeah. of your yeah. Parents, like way too close. <laughs> either either that, or it's a FaceTime that you like hold up to your ear. Right? <laughs> we don't get how to fucking yeah. hold the thing. <laughs> okay. Let me turn, let me flip the camera. Hold on. Okay. So, great. So now we have a way to communicate. Um, so, <laughs> Someone had a good point in chat. How does Bello that. know what a camera is? This is a, cam a camera. A cam Be camera? Bello just made that name up on the spot. And it's... Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Capri Sun Part 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, like, that's cool. a good name. <laughs> that's a good name. Can we try to <laughs> Um, all right, so with that, I mean, I got directions to where I need to go. I, bit, I point to the robot. Where is that, that fucking noise you made when you talked about me? Uh, the robot, again, turns over to you after finishing its little tech support lesson. He goes, travel to necrocephali territory is not recommended. I, that's not what that I asked. Sounds where is about it? right. The the robot, being a, a robot designed to provide answers to questions, uh, does the same thing and transmits the data over to your uh, to your tablet. However, this one looks Lovely. different than Goodbits. Uh, it is mm. not a map as much in the traditional sense as you know, as it directs you towards a uh, towards a rail system that takes you to another part of the station. Which to to a fantasy character is probably much weirder. And I would say even to a person who is familiar with like subway systems, uh, yeah. Though the characters don't know this, the geometry that these systems follow is not necessarily Euclidean. <laughs> Glib gets stuck yeah. in a train loop because yeah. he can't figure out where his stop I'm gonna is. Get, I'm going to get on a fucking train having never known what the fuck a train is and show up. I'm getting on an <laughs> intercontinental railroad without ever knowing what a train is. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of, of, of Bellows one? Chaos? The Chaos Orthodoxy. Orthodoxy. Chaos? I am so scared. They didn't of say member, though. They said yes, specifically they said a creation, creation of, of yeah. the Chaos Orthodoxy, oh. not member of. I also want to point out, I think Bellow is not... I. The, the clip was very specific about don't let Bello off the leash because I'm so scared about what Bello's going to do <laughs> left alone. We've already almost died. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell you about it. <laughs> I had it. I, I fixed it. I solved the problem. I fixed it. Damage control is what I do best around here. So, you know, what's new? Oh, God. Um, And yeah, I guess we part okay, ways. So we're, we're okay, we're splitting up. Yeah, I think we are I think splitting. We're, we're doing a three-way split. Interesting. Here. I'm gonna have to I make some rolls. I think it's uh, technically rolls. just a two-way split because there's two. Bello's yeah. coming with me. There's no way. I'm <laughs> no way you're Bello sending. Did Bello not ask for own. the uh, the, the that it, chaos orthodox? That is a good point. You, uh, you mentioned it, but did you ask? No. 
I, I will ask for that map. If once, ag- one, uh, uh, once again, yeah. the robot says that uh, travel to Chaos Orthodoxy territory is not recommended. However, at this, uh, I guess it's a different language. Travel to Chaos Orthodoxy territory is not recommended for non-members. And that is a different well, thing than... Uh, yeah, that is uh, a different uh, thing. Bell asked why not. The Chaos Orthodoxy regions of Backspace are known to be unpredictable and constantly shifting. It is difficult for non-Chaos-aligned beings to navigate this domain. Well, the boys seems like a fun mm. place, so why don't we try it? I mean, we uh, we navigated the Chaos Realm, so I don't think it can't be any harder than that, right? Yeah. Surely, right? We're, we're, we're experts in Chaos. Give us give us the coordinates or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? We're the party of Chaos, please. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the robot please. gives you the coordinates. Uh, but this time they, like, keep changing a little bit. Not so much that you can't follow it, but, like, the exact, like, you know, travel time on the thing, it, it keeps going up and down right. by, like, a couple minutes. <laughs> I, I do want to say, one of the things that you gave me when you built the Chaos Butterfly thing is that it says you can directly manipulate Chaos in a few ways. I I, get, I later gave you the updates to that for I'm not that bad. It just D and D Beyond didn't port in the info that I copy pasted. Oh, right? Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, I if I don't have the if you don't have that on hand, I'll dig it up from wherever and send it to you again because I that was yeah, that was not me being lazy. It was D and D Beyond glitching. <laughs> Yeah, it says the energies of the chaos realm are tied to your existence, allowing you to navigate and control them better than most. Yeah, there there should be stats tied to that, but D and D Beyond didn't work. I remember that happening in season two. Anyway, I'll I'll find oh, out yeah, later. Oh yeah, it's plus two to Dex plus one to charisma. Okay, I'll find it later. Because Bella's race cool. is homebrewed, so that's that's was that was my attempt yeah. to put the stats in for that, and it did not work. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, where are you? Oh, where are you? Uh, Glib looks to Goodbuild and just goes like, "Do not let him." Out of your sight. I, I'm not gonna let him out. We of will sight. die. Don't you worry. We will die. I know. Instantly. I got it under control. You sure. We got it. We're sure. We're gonna fix everything. Walks away. All right. <laughs> so it's uh. Bella, we're going on an adventure. You ever been on one of those? Oh, we're not whispering anymore. <laughs> no. Okay. We're going on an adventure. <laughs> I imagine yeah. that second time is just like a shriek that echoes around the lobby. We're not whispering anymore. <laughs> We're going out of this maybe, maybe, maybe somewhere in the middle, Bello. Somewhere in the middle. In the, in the middle, like like this. Perfect. That's great. All right, let's uh, go. Now and I'm gonna assume off. that it, it's it's good bit in Bello, and I am assuming, though, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, that you are going to good bit unlimited first. Okay, yeah, because it's cool. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. question then, and I will let the players decide amongst themselves, do you want to do you two at Good But Unlimited, or do you want to do Glib heading to the Necrocephali territory? Why don't we First. roll for it? Like, uh, all right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Roll evens, it. evens, it'll be Bellow and Good Bid. Odds, it'll be Glib. Uh, I'll roll because I'm the DM. Oh, heck, I'll use my I'll use my, my Honor Among Thieves big, big boy. Big oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'll do boom, boom, boom. Uh, we are doing unlimited first. Yeah. All right, so Glib right, heads it. off. Cats. Uh, you guys have a much shorter journey. You guys don't have to get on any of the uh, the space rail systems. So uh, you head out and are directed to a building that is along you know one of the sides. It is definitely one of the larger buildings. Uh, the uh, you know it. Hmm. On the way there, I would like to tell Bello to let me do most of the talking. Hey, you do most of the talking. What, then what do I do? If you got something you want to say, tell me, and I'll give you go ahead. Do, like, I, yes, do I use this voice? Do I have to whisper it? Use your use your secret, secret voice. voice. So this voice. Okay, got it. Got it. That's got it. perfect. Awesome. Let's go get him. Yeah. Uh, right. You guys head into the lot. Uh, Walk into a minefield. <laughs> you guys head into the lobby of Good Bit Unlimited. It is again a much uh, fancier lobby, a, a very nice one. But I would say, with the uh, with Good Bit sensibilities, it is much classier looking than the kind of intimidating government building. I would imagine that that if Good Bit is making a business, it's going to be very almost like fancy hotel like in a sense. Still professional, yeah, uh, but yeah, nice for sure. Uh, actually, roll perception when you get in there. Cool. Huh. That is a six or a nine. 
I just said yeah, dirty twenty. A lot of perception. I forget. Bellow. I'd be perceiving. I rolled an eight. So Actually, I, don't see shit. I should say, um, Goodbid, you should have advantage on this because you're perceiving directly Goodbid related things. Dude got a dirty Great. twenty, and he still gets advantage. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna. 22. Twenty. Okay, so not that different. Uh, still though, this is this <laughs> being an area for the, for Goodbid walking into the lobby of Goodbid Unlimited LLC is like walking into. A, a dream. It is pretty exactly what you would make if you had a business empire, which it, it's wow. exactly what it is. There are, of course, again, many people standing around going in and out of elevators and, and various things. A lot of good bids in various suits, but also notably a, a good population. I would say probably about 50-50 of non-good bids, mm. though with a 22, uh, you will also notice that among the sort of not directly good bid half, there are a lot of uh, half elves or people that seem to resemble half elves in some sense. And with the twenty two, I'll give you. Right. You remember that backspace has technically been around for a while. These might be like alternate good bid kids and relatives and descendants that have stayed in the family business. Because. People have lives on Backspace, and some of you might have possible future children right. <laughs> in alternate realities. Oh, I, man. I think I might just sit on your head, because everyone here looks like you. I'll get confused. You are three That's people. a great idea, Bello. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great idea. Um, hot diggity dog, this place is swanky. Uh, yes, there like a is front a front desk. desk. Uh, I said also that even uh, the people who are not good bit are wearing, you know, similar suits. Uh, but we will say they're... Uh, of course, it's no, probably I, a dress I, code. I, though I will say, I feel like it's less even a dress code and more that this is just what they go for. Like, not, it's not enforced, it's, it's just, just what happens. It's, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good bit thing, yes. you wouldn't get it. <laughs> uh, behind the desk, let's say there's a female half-elf that, from the description, looks like a good bit descendant. Yeah. Don't know how I feel about that. Um, howdy. Uh, I guess I should do like a, a modified good bit voice for all these people, shouldn't I? Hello there. What brings you to Good Bit Unlimited? Uh, yeah. We would like to request meeting with, uh, I guess, what would you call the CEO or the president, if we can, or whoever we can talk to. It's in a oh, place of power. You must be new here. Forgive me for assuming, but are you are you new to Backspace? Yeah, oh, what well, gave it away? We don't exactly run things on just a sort of one person in charge. I mean, there's infinite possibilities, infinite realities. So, <laughs> in, our, in our style, of course, being a good bid, you would know, we've assembled a, a, a set of directors that we call the Good Board. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, that, that, that does sound like something I had in my notes to do in the future. But, uh, okay. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a, a Council of Reeds situation going on here. If anyone says Council of see of Council Ricks, with Reeds came first, then I'm going to punch you if you say it. <laughs> Can we see Council with this good board? We have some information that they may deem interesting. Well, let me check. Uh, the, the, good, the good kid. I'll use that term for now. Uh, the good <laughs> kid uh, turns to her computer and, and starts <laughs> typing in some things. Uh, well, it seems that the, the good board is, is quite booked with various businesses for a few days, but I can get you an appointment mm. in a couple of days if that's uh, something. Of course, what business might that be? What information do you have? Because the, the good board's time is, is very, very hard to come by. Yes. Um, do you see this strange creature on my head? I wasn't going to mention it, but I did notice it coming in. Hello. <laughs> Now, their name's Bello. We have reason to believe that, uh, well, Bello's a god of space. And we would like to bring this. We figured the best person to bring this to would be Good Bit. Uh, you're just dropping yeah, uh, this. The, I'm just dropping this. The fact. woman it's looks fully like <laughs> very confused. Uh, this is, of course, not something that she's ever heard before. You can be pretty confident of that, given the information that you already know about Bello. Oh, I know. But it goes, uh, <laughs> Terribly so. Is is that not a uh, one of them chaos creatures? Yeah, perhaps. Is that a bad uh, no, thing? Not bad, but I, if 
did this chaos creature come from from whatever timeline y'all are from? I mean, the chaos the chaos orthodoxy usually creates things that were made here. They don't usually come back very often. Uh, Bello, where are you I'm from? I'm from back here. Uh, the the woman looks up at Bella with a, an equally confused expression. Um, I want you to roll me a. I'm see. I need to pull up my D and D stats because I've been playing so much Starfinder lately. I've been playing more than that, so I'm gonna get my. I'm gonna use Starfinder st- <laughs> skill names. I probably should have come up with something better than just the truth. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> you couldn't have lied. That's like our big fucking card. Yeah, that was a, a that big... is our big card, but I do trust good bids probably more than anybody else. Why? <laughs> that's, that's a lot of good bids. Good bids. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. I was going to say diplomacy. That is a Pathfinder thing. Does you he get advantage um, because I'm on his head wearing his little hat? Uh, I mean, the the good kid is pretty convinced as to what exactly you might be, so. Um, uh, you yeah. said a person. I mean, you're not lying, so it wouldn't be a deception. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is going to be a 21. 21 is pretty good. Uh, though, you know, good bids are convincing. That's not something that is. Oh, I, I cast good guided. I convinced. cast guided. What am I going to do D4 now? Forward. You added, roll a d4 and add that to the roll. 23. 20, okay. That's, you know what? That is better. 20, 20. That is better. Uh, the, the woman kind of considers her options for a moment. Goes, well, uh, e- even if this is uh, just a chaos and chaos orthodoxy creature, um, there's, there's much validity in, in using their unique properties for a business of good bit unlimited. I'm not sure if I can get you a That's meeting with the saying. entire board. Uh, but I can certainly get you a meeting with at least one or two members. I might actually have a slot open tomorrow. Start to kind of typing. Tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and there's no, there's no possible way we could meet up with anyone today by chance. Kind of on a time-sensitive thing. You know uh, what it is. The woman laughs, seemingly thinking that you're actually joking. <laughs> oh. Right. Okay. I don't know how this system works. <laughs> I'm sure every good bit in this side of the fucking backspace has tried to bribe the desk lady before. Know. Do I even have money on I mean, me? I mean, if you do, <laughs> it's fantasy money. <laughs> good bit, I want to yeah, think about oh. this before you start. What money are do they use in backspace? <laughs> yeah, you don't know. We don't know anything um, about this place. That, that is a great question. We know question. nothing. That is a great question. Um, Miss, what is... Forgive me, as you can as you can tell, I'm kind of new here. Uh, what is the is there a common current currency within the backspace or within specific factions? Uh, well, no, it's, you know, this is a question that she seems to have gotten from good bids many a time, as this is you know generally yeah. This, course, I was about to say gener- This is not a question money. that uh, that surprises her in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes, there is a, a common courtesy, or currency, common courtesy, common, whatever. There, there is a common currency that we use. Many of the factions, especially the ones who are more isolated, tend to use their own as well. But there are exchange rates in some sense. We can uh, get you started on a, a credit system if you would like. Just the, the most simple of things. Now, I'm afraid if you have just, just come in, you can uh, attempt to sell anything that you had on you and get an equivalent value. But depending on the exact nature of your timeline... I can't guarantee how much that might be. Right. Though, but of course, you are a good bid, so if you're looking for employment at Good Bid Unlimited, there are always spots available. I want to know employment. I want to note the fact that that was not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um great. So just off the top of your head, how how valuable would you say like gold and and silver would be in this land? Uh Interesting question, and actually, uh, I'm just going to answer this in, in my voice because for a lot of reasons, gold especially yeah. actually more valuable than you would think. It's not crazy valuable, but um, precious metals like you're in a space station. They don't have mines, here. right? So things like that are are actually a pretty limited resource. There's there's metal and there's like synthesized is, carbon is fiber she and things. Offering me to open like a bank account right uh, now. And like exchange what I have. Is she offering me to do that right now, or is she like, you can? There are places you can go. For the sake of simplicity, let's let's say that that can be done here. Yeah, I, it, good bid. <laughs> sure. It, it is very believable that Good Bid Unlimited has like 
very easy ways of transferring funds around. So, yes. Right. Well, in that case, I would love to make an account and deposit all that I have, if I can. Uh, do you happen to have, like, I don't have an exact currency right in front of me yet, but, like... I have, okay, so, I mean, I have the default, I don't know, because I feel like Goodbid would yeah. be kind of loaded, but all I have on me is, it says five gold and will, will Secondary question, I'll... did you get paid in advance for the job that you took out on Mercury? Or are you just a shit hitman who doesn't take I money think it in was... advance? I definitely would have gotten like. I a think it was half on, right? front, half on delivery. Uh, I'll. I don't have a currency system yes. set up in front of me right now because I had a lot of other will be needed. But we will. We will get that handled for now. If you by any chance, right. if we'll you want to buy time. something this session, like we'll make it work, and I'll get you the exact numbers before next week. Cool. 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 Um, so yeah, great. Got an account. I can actually function within this society. Um, cool. And so when did you say the soonest I could get in was with a few of the board uh, I members? I can get you an appointment tomorrow at, say, uh, well, time might not move exactly as you're expecting in backspace. Again, it depends on the timeline that you're from, but uh, approximately, I'm going to say 3 p.m. She's going to give a weird answer, but I'm not going to time system this whole thing. Right, we're going to use right. We're going to use Earth standard time. <laughs> yeah. In Lord's Weirder <laughs> like, for us as players and audience so that we don't have to do math all the time. We're going to use Earth Standard Time. Uh, yes, we'll say, yes, yes. Do the tablets translate to their own time or do you have to set it to Earth Standard Time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, are we able to monitor the time? You will, yes. You got, is it like, <laughs> oh, it's 37, it's 39, 7 possible. Yeah, it's... And you're just like... <laughs> Uh, it just translates. It, cre it automatically creates a notification on my Bluetooth sync device. Yeah, yeah. No look, I love world is. building, but I like world building that's cool, not figuring out how time works in a space yeah, station in the, the void of pre-existence. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're gonna do. Yeah, we'll say Earth Standard Time for now. Uh, but she just says, if you're interested in employment, though, I'm sure I could set you up some sort of interview before then. Uh, interview? Um, could I? Get in for one round. Uh, she again goes to the computer. Tap tap tap. Always. Uh, yeah, yeah. for sure. for good bids. Yeah. Dude, it might be a, a five to ten minute wait, but. I will wait for an interview. Yeah, just to see if I can find out more. All right, cool. about So anything. we'll set a uh, good bid up. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait for till an tomorrow. interview. Uh, on that note, let's cut over to Glib, and then we'll cut back to uh, to the other thing. Yeah. So. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more of the journey for Glib, I think, because Glib has a, a longer way to go. <laughs> that will be a question. Yes, in so, itself. Mm. uh, Glib, first thing I want you to do is I want you to roll a survival check to see if you can actually make your way through this strange <laughs> area. Please don't fuck me on this. Oh, they'd fucked me on this. Uh, I'm, uh, that's a, a six. six. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not fantastic. Glib's having a bad time. Um... I won't do that yet. Uh, you are, are able to make your way to the rail system. I'll give you that. But there are several sort of uh, these, you know, strange metal boxes that you can get on. Uh, we'll say that there are like three at this station and you are not entirely sure which one is correct. So how are you going to figure that out? Uh, um... Uh, I, I start looking around to see if there's anyone who probably isn't going to mug me. Um, <laughs> is that a perception yeah, you can, check? You can to, perception like, check for the whole area. All right, perception for the area. Come on, big number. I, okay, I want to point out, J Rips in chat said, is this the longest the party's gone without committing a crime? Bello talked about the one thing that no one was allowed to talk about immediately. Crime has been committed. They did, <laughs> they did, they the did a crime. They did now. a crime. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, what was the number that you got? We've done multiple crimes already. <laughs> what was the number that oh you got? Oh, my God. Um, 17. 17. Okay, 17 is pretty good. Uh, I mean, yeah, there are there are people who look relatively unintimidated. Again, the, the range of beings here is absolutely massive. There are more... Uh, gotcha. There are more representatives of... You know, humans, some changelings, things that, like, you know, characters that would be more likely to go and, and travel back in time. But there's also things you've never seen before. So just for my note, are you going for, like, someone you know, in a sense? Or are you going for someone you don't know? You don't have to give me more of an answer than that. I'm trying to, re I'm trying to rely on instinct and look for somebody who looks not 
crime. Not. I'm trying to look for someone. Yeah, I'm trying to to look for the least sketchy person I can. I'm trying find. to think what Glib's definition of sketchy would be because there are a couple different sort of. Probably pretty loose. Canyon. That's anybody who looks relatively farther well, from Canyon. Well, okay, I'll give Not, you... Doesn't look like Canyon, but doesn't look as rich as I will. Did. That's That's his <laughs> definition of, of respect. I'll give you options then. Uh, there is a, uh, a lizard-like creature who is dressed in... Like a lizard folk, basically. Who is dressed in... Well, let's say like... Normal, normal clothes. Clothes that you would expect in sort of a modern day thing. Nothing really remarkable. But they are also, like, yeah. massive. They're, like, eight or nine feet tall. Uh, and there is also oh. a... Uh, there's a, a priest of some kind, it seems, who is wearing dark robes, but with lines of, like, shifting colors on them. Which sounds kind of intimidating, but, like, not really doing anything. He just seems to be, like, waiting on a bus. Shifting colors Shifting as colors in chaos, as in chaos. Shifting, shifting colors, shifting colors shifting. yes. Okay. I'm going to assume that's the orthodoxy person. Those are my two... Two uh, if you want to look around more, I mean, those are the two that, that jump to mind. There's also, there's, let's say there's a good bit around, mm. um, you know, there's, there's, uh, heck, there could be, like, a dock around. I don't know if that's what Glib would go for, but, uh, actually, Absolutely you know what? <laughs> you know what would be kind of cool? This is near Necrocephali territory, so, uh, let's say there, there's a Mercury, but with metal legs instead of wood. It's something that seems like a Mercury. That would be good. Mm. Okay. I know that Mercury is less of a, like, stabby-stabby sort of person. He's a pretty chill dude. So uh, I see a Mercury, and I'm like, ah, great. Someone who seems kind yeah. of respectable. Uh, I I go over, and I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you also go by Mercury. I'm not really sure how names work here. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but that's, uh, that's fine by me. Awesome, great. Um, I'm trying to get to... Ne nephra ne I'm trying to get to the 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 this place. Um, yo, I don't. Yo, yo going to to Necrocephal. Why, why are you going over there? Sightseeing. Uh, I really just no. need to know which uh, <laughs> uh, which one of these rooms I need. When to When you say to... sightseeing, the the Mercury kind of laughs because hope you can see in the dark. I. Let's say I can't. Why? Why is that a problem? Cause it's cause it's dark. Oh, it's dark. Where, where you're okay. going? They'd... Well, I'll buy I'll buy a torch or something on the way. That which one of these big rooms on rails do I need to take to get to where I need to go? The uh, the the, the Mercury kind of looks or confused for a second. Room? Oh oh, the train. Uh, yes. Uh, you're going to want to go to that one over there. Points to the third one down, which notably, no one's on that one. No one's going near that one. Great. That's the least populated. I'm getting the getting the sinking feeling I shouldn't be going here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Mercury. Nice upgrade, by the way. And I start walking away. Kind of. He thanks you because Mercury's polite, but he's very clearly confused. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that he didn't have wooden legs in this version, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he's just very confused yeah. as to why. <laughs> uh, the train that you are uh, getting on is again no one is is using this. Give me a perception check on it, actually. Yeah, I was about to ask how fucking dingy is this this train. Um, that's a dirty twenty. Uh, so the first thing that you notice is, and I actually should uh, I should I should port this into the uh, the system as I'm talking. So give me one second here. Uh, the well, the first thing you notice, I'll do the outside first. While this train, which is made of metal, does look much like the others, uh, the most notable difference that you see, and probably the most concerning thing, is that the bottom seems to be rusted, as if it has been, uh, you know. Mm. gone through some sort of some sort of liquid on a regular basis uh, but the other thing that you notice is on the inside mm. of this sort of crudely spray painted and I think this is going to come up as a PNG which might screw me but is a uh, a more crude version of oh that came up way too big this symbol and again I'm, it came up too big so I'm shrinking it down and, but it is a crude version of this 
waiting for it to... Oh, oh. oh okay, too big. Oh! Uh, hmm. Look at that. I'll leave that up for the duration of the scene. Okay. If you've looked at the merch store, you recognize this. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't... That looks nice. <sighs> that's not... That's not... That's not a good sign. Um... Okay. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm just kind of, I, I take what I'm assuming there are seats yeah. in here. I'm assuming this looks like a New York yeah, subway. Yeah, future, future um, New York subway. Yeah, I, I sit down on what I'm assuming is a super dingy seat. In a yeah, it's kind of like a damp. Cart with no <laughs> one in it. Um, mm. mm -hmm. uh, when you sit down, do I have the most distinct feeling after a moment, no one else gets on this thing, and uh, the door slides yeah, closed, and you hear... What was probably once intended to be a, a sort of, a, you know, train announcer disembodied voice, but has clearly not been maintained. And so rather than, you know, a, a full thing, the speaker seemed to have to do, Nobody for the next seven months This is not good. I have, I have made a mistake. This is a bad idea. <laughs> and this right is... as you say that, uh, though you don't feel any different on the inside of the train, there's no sense of motion... You see out the windows mm. just rocket away from the station. Uh, you look at, Do I feel any like No movement inside whatsoever. Uh, so it's a very just, surreal experience. Like you're watching screens, basically. Uh, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> hmm? uh, <laughs> uh, you see these you know, sort of shifting colors go by. Once again, there are no windows to outside space anywhere. Uh, the tunnel that you are going through, if, if you want to do like an arcana check to try to figure out what it is you can, but that would just be lore stuff. Uh, uh, no, I'm just scared. I just, <laughs> the, yeah. the world disappeared outside. Uh, now, notably, the biggest change, and this is something that from Mercury's description, you can assume is probably more unique to this rail. Uh, there are lights inside this thing, and there are also lights outside in the tunnel that you are going through. But a couple minutes into your journey... The lights on the outside of the car just cut abruptly, as if you know the, the electricity was was slashed halfway down the line. There are still lights inside your vehicle, but not outside. Oh God, is this place filled with magical darkness? It, I oh, will say no, no, no. It is not magical darkness. I didn't say it goes black. I said the lights cut. Okay. For, you can still see, but it is right. you know okay. dark, kind right. of ominous for that. Uh, gotcha. And after a few moments, the uh, train comes to a halt, which you can, again, only tell by looking out the windows, which, luckily, you have dark vision. Uh, and the doors yep. open. That uh, that garbled, disembodied, presumably announcer kind of goes off again. Uh, outside, you can't really see a ton, even though it is, uh, you know, uh, not... Even though you can see in the dark, it seems that you're in a larger chamber, so you can't see a ton past. There is a layer of, of water just maybe like a foot or so deep, which for Glib is pretty big, just surrounding mm -hmm. everything. What's your dark vision range? Probably like 30 feet? I think that's like standard. 60, 60 feet. feet. Okay. Yeah, 60 feet. Um, so you can see kind of some vague structures off in the uh, the distance. You can actually, well, you wouldn't be able to see that well through the water. You can see some structures off at the boundaries of your, of your vision, but it's basically just kind of a dark, weird pool. Hmm. Hmm. I swear to God, if there's nothing important here, I'm <laughs> going to fucking kill that robot and then step off of uh, the train, which I'm assuming... Yeah, once you step off the train, you feel again. a splash on your back as the train rockets through the puddle <laughs> off into the uh, the dark tunnel, which you can see sort of the outline of it, but that's about it. And then, yeah, yeah you're here. Okay. Um, Wonder how often that uh, I'm like looking for any signs of life at all and that I wasn't just dropped off in a pit of darkness. Make your perception check. Um, do I even see any ghosts? Uh, that's also a dirty 20. Dang, glibs are rolling well this season. Uh, you see... Yeah. Episode, don't jinx <laughs> So me. far this season. Anyway, uh, on the outskirts of your vision, after looking around for a moment, though you're not really sure, you could argue there was like a flicker of something red. Just very brief. Red's never good. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna start 
just kind of walking in the opposite direction of the tunnel that I just got out of and hoping I don't fall off anything. As you walk from near the direction where you saw red, you hear a very subtle splash sound. Um, hands <laughs> immediately prepared with Eldritch Blast the second that I hear anything move. Uh, in that case, I'm going to need you to make me another perception check. Okay. <laughs> Is oh god! I rolled that off the table. I rolled it off the table again, and then I got great. Now good. I'm scared. That's uh, six. Well, you're lucky because I rolled a three. So wow! Oh, thank god. So though <laughs> though your awareness is still not really up to par in this area, you are barely able to see a flash of what looks like four red tentacles, each ending in a metal spike flashing towards you out of the darkness. Mm, like, actively, actively coming, coming at, you. at you. Um, I fire an Eldritch Blast directly where I see it coming uh, from and try and move out of the way. Like, dodge fire. Sort make of. me an attack roll. See if you hit. Not This is not a full combat yet, but I. that's the best way to do that. Right. Yet. yet. It could be. Yeah. I'm plotting and scheming for what I'm gonna say for my attack energy. Attack roll, like a yeah, just Eldritch, Eldritch Blast uh, attack. Hit roll yeah, I, I just meant Eldritch, Eldritch Blast attack. Oh, fuck me, that is a nat one. <laughs> a nat one. Oh, okay. I'll. It's a, it's a dirty. It's a dirty ten, but it's a nat one. I'll do a one. little bit of a, a trope then here. Uh, your okay. Eldritch Blast kind of cranes off into the darkness. You can see, you know, a, a very small sort of aura of light surrounding it before it vanishes into yeah. the darkness. Uh, it, you don't hear anything from the direction that you uh, that you fired at the creature, so you're not really sure what it is. Okay. But as you're trying to figure that out, from behind you, it seems to be a second set of the four tentacles bursts out and wraps around you. Ooh. Ooh, went no. for a little, went oh, for a little no. Jurassic Park um, raptor hunting vibe there. That's the that's yeah. the aesthetic here. So now I'm tied yes. up. And as this happens, now that you are restrained, the first figure Fuck. that you shot at, okay, you see a, a, some ripples in the water come, you know, fully into your range of dark vision, and something that you okay. have never seen before rises up out of the darkness. Now, I don't have art for this yet. I am planning on getting it, especially if the characters are as popular as I think they're going to be. But I would describe okay. it as a frame of reference, and I'll get more to, more descriptive, but as a baseline, best thing I could just relate this to is Predator. Uh, it is a largely metal creature. Seems like a, a, a robotic suit or a robotic shell uh, with a large, gaping, sort of red inset glowing circle in its face. In the chest okay. and running all throughout uh, the legs and the torso and up to the head are tubes that seem to carry... They carry a red liquid that is pretty easy to identify as blood all throughout the system. You see the tentacles of this hmm. thing that lash out to you retract into the body. And again, there are four of them. And as they retract... They coil around themselves, forming a more humanoid arm, uh, branching out at the end with, you know, there are big metal spikes on the end of each of them. Uh, the metal spikes extend, okay. sort of forming a rudimentary four-fingered hand. Okay. <laughs> the other arm then comes into view, rising out of the water, and it is carrying a large spear. The other thing that you notice mm. is that it has very large mechanical bat-like wings extending out from the back of it that unfurl as it rises up out of okay. the water. And it just stares at you. Fuck me. Um, okay, tied up, Glib is just fucking staring at this thing and just... I take it you won't believe the tourist line that I gave the last guy. What brings you to the realm of the Necrocephali? Is that intentionally the same oh, voice? Oh, very man? much so. If okay. anything, it has like a little um, robot sort of digitized filter over it. But okay. yes. I do, I'm asking that because Glib... Oh, yes, he would. Like, oh, God. Uh, Glib just kind of stares at him for a second and he's like... Do not fucking tell me that you're the Kraken. The thing pauses for a second and you see its head tilt in an almost confused expression. Uh, it doesn't really have a face mm. to make expressions 
goes, Right. The Kraken. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yes. The singular one. Do not tell me there are more of you. Oh, God. That is As you're speaking. Great for me. I had one of you in my head for a while. I don't like this. As you're speaking, it leans in inspecting you closer again you're since you're tied up presumably by another one of these yeah. things that is behind you but out of your field yeah. of view it leans in like an inch away from your face and you see a red line go yeah. down its faceplate like it's you know scanning your form oh great lovely <clears throat> you know me do i know you uh at this point you feel a little sort of a burst of magical power as Blob manifests next to you. Not called, just sort of mm. appears. Gotcha. This uh. immediately attracts the thing's attention uh, as it whips its head around, not really concerned about you anymore, only staring at this tiny okay. little squid guy uh, that is now floating. Yeah. Uh, Blob doesn't really know exactly what to say. Not really sure. He, he Even he doesn't gotcha. seem to know exactly why he is manifested at the moment. Mm, but this uh, creature le it leans okay. in again, does a little scan, says, You. But no. Something is different. Your tentacles. They're all here. Where are your scars? You are not the father I knew. You come from before the wars. <laughs> um, oh, Blob seems so equally stunned at exactly what this thing is. You see a cavity in the chest open, revealing a more clear panel. See a creature similar to Blob, but not in a cute way. Think if, if you've know Doctor Who, if you've ever seen the inside of a Dalek, yeah, um, yeah, like that. Yeah. A more sort of emaciated version of Blob's species hooked into this system that seems to be pumping blood through tubes directly into its form as it sort of lays there in the core of this creature. And Blob just kind of starts babbling. That's horrible. Uh, 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 I, uh, you, uh, <laughs> I need someone to explain shit to me right now because I, I was under the impression that this was a familiar and not a species. So... Uh, the, the necrocephali, as you assume they're called, sort of waves his hand. Right. Uh, and the tentacles that are holding you uh, recede back into the darkness. Okay. Okay. Uh, the thing does not really seem super concerned with you, though. It's still obviously focusing more on Blob, who is unconcerned about this. But he still speaks addressing you, even though his gaze has not turned off of the, uh, the other tiny little squid guy. Yeah. As it stands, he goes... The line between magic and biology is often blurred in times of crisis. Okay, um, that's insightful. Uh, we're still in a black pit. I was held in tentacles two seconds ago and you're staring at my essentially assistant, um, like he's a god. And I'm the god in this scenario, so I would really like to know what the hell is going on. Rather than answering your question, the thing turns to you uh, and responds with a question of its own. Tell me, what was it like in your time? Uh, the world was ending. Uh, the, we got back here because we were going to go and and kill the god of dreams before he became the god of dreams other than the world ending everything was pretty much fine though i think i'm pretty sure i don't know what fine really qualifies for here i saw a dude with metal legs earlier uh but things weren't war like uh we had one we had one almost war but i drank that guy so that's not really a problem uh uh, what were you expecting? The creature pauses for a moment and then continues. His... <sighs> My time was different. After the death of Gloom and the resurrection of the Kraken, we did not go into the dark lightly. We evolved and fought back non-existence for as long as we could. 
Ah. Well, in my time, all of you were dead. <laughs> and so is the Kraken. Ah. Uh, I saw his corpse be used as a boat. <laughs> I, I, I don't really know how to... Uh, the Kraken creature kind of... Well, yeah, Necrocephali, that's the name we're going by now. Uh, the Necrocephali makes a sound that you can sort of interpret as, as chuckling despite the you know, many levels of different types of distortion on and goes, Perhaps yeah. if you had died and the Kraken lived sooner, your time would have been more successful. I don't want my miss earlier to make you a little bit too overconfident, buddy. Uh, again, it chuckles. I suppose it is irrelevant, for we were defeated as well. So we ended up here and built our empire anew. Gestures to the darkness uh, around him, indicating that there is yeah. much around you that you cannot see. Yeah, Glib looks around and goes, yeah, hell of an empire. Fire. Uh, still not make it down here yet? You guys a little behind the times? Uh, once again, it laughs a little bit harder this time. Just behind mm -hmm. the times. We are ahead in all aspects. We are the arms that grasp infinity. We are the wings that span eternity. We are the fangs that pierce reality. We are the necrocephali, and we shall not fall. To anyone. I found y'all's name in a registry, uh, and came here following this glass brick. That's real, that's real poetic and shit, but, um, we're in a pit. I showed up here in a rusted out room. Um, currently you're idolizing what I use as essentially a periscope that talks to me. So... Ah, oh, yes. Allow me to open your eyes. After saying that, uh, this thing immediately lashes out one of its tentacle arms again, you know, unfurling them into the, the swarm of four, and grabs Blob. Yeah. But instead of doing anything to Blob, uh, you see, like, a little red pulse go down the tubes, mm -hmm. like a little red glow. And when it hits Blob, due to your magical connection... Mm -hmm. You see your range of dark vision begin to expand. And I want it stated right, like, as soon as he reached his hand out, I poked my, <laughs> I pulled my hand up to, yeah. like, shoot the fucker I if anything it. happened. You see now that you are standing on a platform of some kind. This, this little, like, one foot, okay. uh, you know, puddle of water. Uh, it is, uh, gotcha. not the whole thing, it is, it is fairly small, uh, and it goes far deeper uh, off this platform, very, you know, down into the abyss. And as your dark vision okay. expands, you can see a lot more below you. An entire civilization, and seemingly, from the looks of things, a very, very heavily militarized one. You see squads of these identical robotic creatures uh, moving, you know, in, in sort of pack formation, in various, uh, various directions around the streets. There are things that look like turrets mounted on the top of the buildings aimed at the surface of the water. There are things that I can really only describe as submarine tanks, all with a sort of aesthetic that I would call like cyberpunk gothic. Like imagine a stereotypical vampire society like a thousand years in the future. Oh, that's why it's the pandemic. So. Remember, uh. you, Glib, are a... Squid vampire. Necrocephali. Right. <laughs> uh, I uh, did okay. It um, all makes sense. I'm realizing that I'm Krang. Uh, <laughs> and this is terrifying. Um So I'm I'm gonna look down at this fucking militarized militia that is hiding at the end of a subway and just uh so I'm not sure I was filled in on the uh, on the specifics of this. What's going on here? We await our time to return to reality and strike down those who oppose us. I like the sound of that. <laughs> uh, um, when can we get started? Uh... 
the creature once again uh, laughs, but more more optimistically this time. It's not really ominous. It, it seems to genuinely mm. like that you said that. Uh, and a few more of the creatures, now that you can see darkness, you can see them swim up. Uh, and as they swim, you can see their wings sort of fold back down and sort of morph into like fin-like structures until they get out of the water, at which point they okay. unfurl into vampire-like wings again. Uh, a few more of them then swing up and say, uh, the creature, the, the presumable leader of these things, speaks again and says, It seems the tales we heard of you did not overstate your tenacity. So you do know me. Good. Do you guys know where I can burn this place to the ground? Uh, it, uh, it pauses for a moment and goes, you misunderstand. We have no quarrel with backspace. It is the only thing that protects us. Hmm. Hmm. You see, you had me. You had me up until this exact second. Who exactly are you planning to kill, and how can I convince you it should be Emerald? Uh. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, man. Immediately committing the, the most heinous Well, no, 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 no. The, the Necrocephalite does not seem to recognize the name. Mm. So let me read. Um, I, I see that he doesn't really understand what I'm talking yeah. about. Uh, and I go, okay, let me rephrase it this way. If you kill the guy that I'm going after... He's the guy in charge of this place. No one hunts anyone. You guys are back in reality. And I get exactly what I want. So we can go and kill him. And then we can fix everything. Uh, the, the leader, again, leans in close to you. Not as close as last time. He goes, Again. I admire your tenacity, and the Necrocephali shall hear your arguments. But do not misunderstand. While well, I respect you, this is my realm, and I am the position of authority. When he says this, the amassed group mm. of Necrocephali behind him, as one, start chanting, Arms, wings, fangs! Arms, wings, fangs! Just repeatedly oh as a, a war mm. cry. <laughs> I, lo I look back at the guy and we'll s and uh, Glib nods and chuckles and goes, "Okay." Uh, by the way, oh, and continue. then mm, no, 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 just okay. Where do we start? All right, that's a perfect time to cut back to good bid. Uh, by the way, I'll go ahead and say this again: if you haven't looked at the merch store. Uh, you can buy merch, shirts, and hoodies and stuff with the Necrocephali insignia on the front, uh, and they say arms, wings, and fangs on the back. So if anyone mm. wants the cool the cool Necrocephali merch... I like that. That gave them a whole, like, war cry speech and everything, so buy this. I worked hard. I think they're cool. Uh, Very cool. Yes, so... That's terrifying. Yeah, Goodbiz, uh, or not Goodbiz, Glib has, has made a little bit of an alliance. I should say, like, for what it's worth, they don't seem like... You, you've met more evil things. They seemed, from everything in the story, yeah. like they are, they're angry that reality got destroyed and they want to fix it. They just are doing so in a more warlike way than you are. So we'll see how that, uh, that ideology matches up. Uh, okay. But anyway, this will be a good time to cut back to Goodbid. Though actually, yeah. I, I lied. I'm actually going to throw us to a pause screen really quick. Mostly because doing that voice for that long when I hadn't done it in a while, <laughs> I need water. So I'm going to throw us to like a two minute pause screen here just so that I can refill my water and restore my throat from that, uh, that right. voice. And then when we get back, we will continue uh, Good Bid and Bellows arc. So don't go anywhere. Uh, and we'll see you all in a couple minutes. Enjoy the, the new pause screen if you haven't seen it yet. And we're back. Uh, I guess I can take the the necrocephali sigil off the uh, off the oh, screen now. Well, I probably should have done it in the other order because now it's just 
overtaking Nathan. <laughs> but where is it? I lost it. There we go. There we go. I got to get the Good Bit Unlimited logo uh, done as well. I feel like everyone's going to like all three of the factions that you're going to be meeting today. Who the fuck made the chat emote only again? <laughs> Archie likes doing that to screw with me. I didn't and do it works. I didn't do, I didn't no, no, no. It was, it was Archie. It was Archie. I didn't do anything. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Someone asked a, a good question in chat. How many people have the Necrocephali killed because how do they have that much blood? That's a good question that wasn't asked. That's a great question. That's a good question that was That's not a, yet asked. need a source somewhere. Yeah. Um, there's... Should I, should I give a little, like kind of Easter egg lore drop about the Necrocephali that might never come up. That's more of a bit than no, anything. No, you sure. should save that for the after show. True. All right, sure. Uh-huh. I'll give you a good little Easter egg uh-huh. lore bit in the in the after show. See, Bello needs to be in good business. And exactly. That's I wonder if I can get step. Bello a job. I wonder if <laughs> already on the fucking grind set. Uh, all right, so yeah, we'll, we'll do that in the after show, which for those who don't know, you get on our Patreon in yeah, the yeah. true spirit of... of uh, Good bit unlimited. Now I have also uh, I've rolled to see uh, which good which member of the good board was uh, available. So I do know oh, I do out. know which member of the good board is available. That's not till tomorrow though, right? Or is that happening right now? Oh, that is, that is happening tomorrow. But we'll see when that uh, when that happens. I'm tempted to move it up just because I like this character. You also have a uh, interview. In, yeah, the inter- the interview yeah. now. The interview so. is now. Um, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, well, I could just, I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, th- while this is happening, we're cutting back to Good Bit and Bellow. Like I said, yeah. you do have like 10, 15 minutes if you want to do anything before the interview. You don't have to, but I'll give you the opportunity if you want to try to gather some more info before then. I would, I would like to make some sort of arcana check to see if spells can be cast in this building. Okay. Just because I wouldn't be surprised if Good Bit took precautions. Um... 23? Uh, you can tell the magical signatures of Backspace. This is the first Arcana check that's been made there. The magical yeah. signatures here are strange and much like a lot of the other things that you will come to find, a little bit more unpredictable. In the lobby, at least, it does not seem like there are wards. There might be in other areas of the building, but not right here. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just wait for the interview. For, for whatever. Um, uh, I'm going to try to bring Bella with me. Yeah. <laughs> into it, so. Uh, I'm, I'm still sitting on, on your head. On I'm the head. Like, good bit. I know you, I use it by, by secret voice. Very good, Bella. What you need? You know that good bit that was taking us to, to the person I'm not supposed to talk about earlier? Yes, yes, I do. Is that going to be a problem or an hour in a room of good bits? That is an excellent question, Bello. I'm going to get back to you on that. But I'm okay. going to say no. Okay. Just double checking. For sure. Good bit sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and for people saying in the in the chat, don't worry. Any, like, story... I've made this solemn promise there will not be, like, story important lore in Patreon stuff. That would be awful of me to do. So I'm not... I yeah, will never yeah. do that. Uh, but yeah. Also, the the make it available to Amy. Amy has a direct connection to both me. Yeah, and if Amy Matt, if Amy wants to know, Amy thing. can ask me, and I will tell her. <laughs> Amy yeah. can text me, and I will tell her. Uh, anyway, so uh, after a moment, somebody uh, I will say just a, another good kid, a, a younger, like maybe like uh. early twenties guy who looks like it could be a descendant of Goodbid. Uh, comes to right. take you and Bello uh, into back room and takes you into a, a, an office. Now, cool. uh, the, uh, the good bit that takes you there, however, does not seem to be the one who is conducting the interview. He sort of takes you to the office and then leaves. Uh, and inside the office, sitting at the desk, is a dragonborn. Not a good bit. Ah. A dragonborn wearing a suit uh, with a very fine mustache, s- still, <laughs> somehow... <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and he he stands up to to shake your hand yeah, as you hand. as you enter. Uh, his name is Mr. Goodbid because well, I don't like, conducting good business. I, I assumed that much, sir. Good to good to meet another good bid on the company. Always glad to have more of you here. You built this place from the ground up, after all. Well, not you, but you understand. 
Yes, yes. Well, I am relatively new here, but uh, you know, I heard I heard y'all were hiring. Uh, yes, of course. Um, my name is Mr. Goldscale. Uh, gold scale, pleasure. <laughs> uh, notably, his scales are not gold. He is a uh, silver dragonborn. But oh well. Uh, I, <laughs> big dreams. I love so much how fucking awkward Goodman is about this. <laughs> Hi. I, have, <laughs> I haven't had to do a job interview in <laughs> fucking years. <laughs> yep. I mean, same. But I'm the one normally doing this. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I bellow. Good to meet you. Are, are you interviewing as well? We don't see chaos orthodoxy creations here very often, but... Uh... Oh, this isn't a group interview? I just assumed. Well, I, I, I look at my notes here. I only have the Mr. Good bit down, but I suppose since you're here... Ah, you know, when in... When in fucking... Well, what is Rome? <laughs> <laughs> What what is Rome? That's a good that's question. A, what is that's, Rome? I don't know. It just that, kind of came. Yeah, that's there. somebody in the That's today. just like a phrase of, of for like <laughs> for like I don't know. <laughs> what is Rome? What is Rome? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I, okay. Never mind. I I could go on a rant about the theoretical etymology of that later. But uh, oh anyway, God. what is Rome? Well, uh, good to you. The I'm here. There are two chairs in front of the Mr. Goldscale's desk, and so he goes, oh, please take a seat, take a seat. Yeah. So first off, uh, formality, you said you, you just arrived. How long have you been in, in backspace? Oh, a day, I'd say. He kind of, he laughs, goes, oh, well, uh, I shouldn't be surprised that a good bit is taking initiative, trying to integrate himself into the workings of the company so quickly. Of course. Uh, the economy only works if we all work together to make it work. Now, what are your qualifications? What did you do back in your timeline? Ooh, I mean, well, what didn't I do? Save the world twice. Um, currently saving it again right now, kind of, but sort of working on that. Um, uh, I'm a god. I got, I got, I, I got powers, man. I'm powerful. I'm a powerful oh. guy. Now, this is interesting. This will answer the question you had earlier. Uh, when you say that, he kind of perks up and goes, Oh, my God, that's, that's interesting. I'll make sure to note that down. And he says that in, like, the same cadence you would expect someone to say, like, Oh, you have a master's degree. Right. <laughs> I asked, well, like, it's a the... thing. It's not like, Oh, my God, it's a God standing in front of me. But it's a thing. <laughs> Is that a common, oh. relatively common thing? I, I wouldn't say it's common. It's quite a qualification. You should be proud of yourself. Right. Uh, and Bello, Bello here, what, what did you do? Um, I kind of just was around. I hung out with some friends. I disappeared a couple stars. I am also a god as well, but a different one from Good Men. This is true. Now, uh, these qualifications in a business setting are obviously not exactly what Mr. Goldscale is looking for, but he kind of forces <laughs> a smile and nods and you see him like also write some things down, but like notably less. Like he was writing down everything good, but it says Bello talks <laughs> and he just goes like, ah, and then stops. <laughs> um, I, I give him a rundown of the variety of businesses that I ran in my time from Capri Sun to, you know, the, the, the hitman thing. I assume that's we're all good bids. That's not like a hit. Man yeah, it, it's <laughs> casual. Oh yeah, this like side project I did. I killed a couple people here and there. Like, uh, again, a bit all I, very I, casual. <laughs> yeah. And I helped free this being from a contraption, and that it kind of led to the end of the world. But I helped somebody. And that's what matters. Hel mm -hmm. Helping is good. Yes. And then he basically gave me special powers. Good bit. Did you know that? No, I don't think so. Uh, you can... <laughs> roll it with the punches. That's yeah, that, that is kind of important. I don't think anyone knew that Bella, Bella let one of the blanks out. Noted. Um, but I'm in a business room. I'm in an interview right now. And helping is great. And Bella does a lot of helping. I've met Bello an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bello is, is here, and uh, that's, Bello's here, and important, but also basically just here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Mr. Goldscale is again, 
confused by his qualifications, you see him write down like a word or two, probably, <laughs> um, before moving on. He goes, and, and did you have a, a desired sort of work or field that you would like to do for Good Bit Unlimited? We're a wide ranging company, of course. Many different, many different imprints, many different uh, holdings. And... Yes, of course. Um, well, if possible, I would love a job that I can do remotely. That would be fantastic. Oh, of course, that's not uncommon here. I mean, geometry and spatial navigation here is a little bit... Uh, it's shaky at times, so a bit difficult to get to work on time in some occasions. So remote work is something we're open to. We're not animals. Can I... Um, uh, I I'm going to ask before I do what I was about to do. I'm like, and what is, the, what is the starting sort of pay at a place like this? Uh, he says a number... Huh. Um, but I, I get can to say, I insight oh, yeah, you can insight it, but also like you don't know how the money system works here yet. So I yeah, don't. Uh, um, you can you can insight it. Fuck. Well, fuck. Fuck. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, he again. The number that he says specifically means nothing to you, but from right. sort of the words around it, he says like. Oh well, for a good bid, we can offer. Sort of giving a sense, it's like you're, whether I don't know, like I don't know if if that's like self nepotism. I don't know, like what you call that. Right. But uh, good bids are gonna be uh, paid a little bit more, it seems. But right, again, right, you right. don't know what the standard is compared to to anything else. Okay. Um. Should I do something ballsy? Oh. <laughs> I would uh, really quick, scary, really, <laughs> really quick. Fuck. I'm just going to cast message to Bello and just see if I'm able to, first of all. Uh, yeah, see if there's like, here, a thing that can happen. You're able to at the moment. Nothing really happens. Okay. Well, I, don't, no, I don't think I I'm going to say, say anything. Happen. Nothing that you didn't want to happen happens. I don't think the I'm going to say anything. I just wanted to be able to know that I could. Um, <laughs> and he's talking about money. I'm going to cast, and this may seem like overkill, a sixth level spell here. Okay. Um, there's only one guy in this room, but I'm going to cast Mass Suggestion because it's the only suggestion spell I have. <laughs> yeah, all right, uh, fair. And essentially s say to him, uh, what am I, limited to a sentence or two? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I cast Mass Suggestion and go... Well, I think it would be beneficial for both of us if you could put me at the highest paying position possible, as well as spending the next day, you know, hyping up me, Mr. Goodbid. That, that would really do wonders to get my career started. Now, I'm going to assume there's a save for this. This is yes. a win. Oh, what? Oh, did he? Oh, oh Panda. I'm... Panda's thing happened. Oh, <laughs> Panda, you're muted. I don't know what just happened to you. Everyone reset for a yeah, second. Yeah, same, oh, okay. same, same. Skype just had a problem. I think, other than Panda's camera being weird, I think everybody's back. Can everyone in chat hear us? That was probably was okay. Scary. Well, I'll get the cameras back to normal if, if there's any weirdness that goes on. Uh, okay, I'm going to call that good because I can hear everybody. Okay. So, what's the will save of? It is a wisdom save of 17. Wisdom save of 17. Does Bella also have to do that? Uh, no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it would have been really funny if Bello just got caught up in this you should hype up good bid for the next day spell. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, yes. it. I don't know exactly what, like, the the way to tell this would, but it does seem that the spell works. Uh, the, cool. the Mr. Goldscale kind of seems to, to think for a second. He goes, well, you know, I like you, and, of course, it, it's mutually beneficial, of course, if a... a recruiter's new hire does does well in the company so uh, uh, let me pull some strings and uh, see what we have available and i'll get back to you and he kind of winks that would be fantastic now this spell lasts for 24 hours okay. um so that's how long he'll be talking good about me to all his constituents um or until his task is completed but i told him to talk about me for the next day so okay cool uh <laughs> Okay, with that, you can ask any... Uh, did you say what, like, position or field you wanted to be in? Did I, I said that? I said remote and then highest paid position. Re okay, also, so the instructions were remote and pays well. Gotcha. I, I respect it. Yeah, because I don't know what so, the fuck uh, is going on. Uh, yeah, gotcha. You know? 
Uh, back so, in my back in my job, we got scroll writers, dude. We don't. Have, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that will uh, unless you have any other questions for Mr. Goldskate, which you are free to ask either of you, Bella no, or I Goodbid. Uh, he will um, look into that and and deliver you that information. And I, and I will shake Goldscale's hand and be on our way to Bellow's okay. section. All right. Uh, I guess. Thank we'll just... you very much for your time, Mr. Goldscales. I'll be waiting for your offer. Uh, oh yeah, can I just change? To make sure to say give us. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Instead yeah. of give me. Sure. Uh, right, I'll, I will. I will allow that. Also, I'll say given given like the time of how this. Well, no, given the time because it took Glib longer to get to the Necrocephali uh, city, which I need to come up with a better name for. But uh, we'll do the the, the Bellow scene now. I think then we'll Bellow and go. Okay. So. Uh, I am going uh, I to will, need. I will. Hmm? Can I figure out? Did, did we get taught how to text? Can I shoot? Yeah, yeah, I you shoot, yeah. Can I text be like. You can communicate. Though I will say, question mark. This is prob like you're probably texting him like, like right <laughs> after. Actually, yeah, you good. Glenn actually probably could meet up with you if you wanted to do all uh, this next one all together. So if you want, if if you want to text me right now, I'll do. We'll do the the text conversation in real time. <laughs> okay, sure. Go for I it. I text and be like, or or they already got me and Bello a job climbing the corporate ladder at Good Bit Unlimited. <laughs> Have a uh, meeting with higher ups tomorrow. Glib text back. Found nothing. Still looking. Great. Can't really deception check a fucking text. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that is a, a, a difficult, wow. a difficult, especially especially for you not really knowing how to how to check vibes how, on how text. Yeah, like, yeah. what what is texting culture? Yeah. Like, he put like w- weird images. I what is used a period. Skull? Is that a problem? <laughs> <laughs> I I would imagine that at least one of you, if any of you, probably bellow like, I I th- and, and Momo. Feel free to correct me because this is your character. I imagine Bellow text and just puts in like a lot of entirely random emojis just because like oh look there's little pictures in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like there's like a chair and then a flower and then like a skiing dude at the, those random things at the end of every text. It's never words. It's just a yeah. story through pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the whole thing is typed out and just pictograms. Yes. They're really fun oh to God. text. A <laughs> picture is worth a thousand words. What they oh say. <laughs> oh, and this picture is kind of small, so maybe like a hundred words, but I can put a bunch of them. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so, uh, Glib, I guess I'll, I'll leave that up to you then. Are you meeting yeah, up we, with the other two up? for the, the next faction, or or no? Again, your call entirely. Nope. Nope, <laughs> all right. I haven't He's found anything. I'm still looking. Okay. All right, still, still looking through there. So, uh, I am going to need you both to make survival checks, again, because you're not entirely sure how this works, and this is also the place that is harder to get to by definition. Do I yes. get advantage because I can to. control chaos? Yes. Ooh. All right. That is going to be a 25. Okay, that's, yeah, that's Thank God, because I got a 10. (laughs) So, uh, good bid. You are are trying to look at this this map that is, again, not like any map you've ever seen before. Uh, Bello, you kind of look at it over good bid's shoulder, and you're not really sure why it's confusing. It kind of just makes sense to you. Uh, so, yeah, you, you're... Can Bello hold things? Yeah, I mean, I have, like, little little leg arms. <laughs> little leg arms. <laughs> if you're holding it, can you see it? So, uh, Bello takes the, the iPad and yeah. flies off. Okay. Now, no not too fast. It's worth noting a good bit. As you look, like, it seems like Bello is taking a lot of wrong turns here, but, like, somehow it, it never actually goes off course. Whatever Bello is doing seems to be working in some capacity. Though how I'm used to rolling with it, you would yeah you Uh-oh. would not be able to understand you whether you chalk that up to the the unstable nature of backspace or the unstable nature of bellow is a is a a personal decision for you as a player but right uh, eventually you get to a similar set of trains that uh, to the ones that Glib went on which are different ones not the exact same set the uh, the one that Bello is able to figure out probably leads to the chaos orthodoxy sanctum is slightly more populated than the one Glib took. Not as heavily populated because, again, this is not a place that is traveled to often. And most of the people who are there are 
they have something on their person that is covered in you know chaos energy that's sort of swirling iridescence uh, or they have it directly integrated onto their bodies in fact there are some that are species you do not recognize which is not a surprise in backspace there have been plenty of, uh, of species you do not recognize but there are more of them here <clears throat> So you are uh, free to interact here as you want, or you can just get on the train and go. I was, I was going to get on the train. Good big, keep up. You got long legs. You I'm go. coming, I'm coming. I don't really know where we're going, but it seems to be working. So good job, Bello. It's just a straight line. You got to stick with me. For sure. Good big gets his ankles broken. As Bello <laughs> like so. Come on, the train's about to leave. Uh, you get on the train. Uh, this time, the announcer voice uh, functions. This this train, while something looks just kind of off about it in general, it, it like the pers- the the proportions aren't exactly correct in some sense. It it does look well kept. Uh, the announcer voice works correctly as it announces that you are traveling to the chaos uh, chaos orthodoxy sanctum. Uh, and once again, I won't describe it again because it's a similar experience to Glib, without mm-hmm. the lights going out. Uh, But this time, the train lets you out in another courtyard area. Not as massive as the one that you uh, just came from. Uh, But the notable difference is that in the center of this dome, rather than a natural area, there is a massive building, tree, kind of hard to say exactly what it is, but it is made out of a slightly more solid version of the chaos energy that you are very familiar with. It almost looks like an organic tree-shaped building, is I guess how I would call it. And the mm. the roots and branches of this thing are extending all through the ground and the sky, uh, touching and, and coming into contact with the buildings all around the edges of this dome and the ground and the dome above, even. And where they come into contact... Again, the proportions of the areas seem wrong. They seem distorted in some sense. And as you stand there, it looks like all of this is very slowly moving and shifting slightly. Well, Glib says you find important things in big buildings. So let's go to the big building. Lead the way. Uh, Bello. Definitely did not say that, but okay. <laughs> As Bello happily floats to this strange structure in the center, you pass uh, more of these unique beings. They all seem, again, sort of like Bello in a sense. Not all butterflies, but there are similarities to Bello in that they are, you know, they're all unique, but you can see the general sort of. It, it's understandable why people mistook Bello for uh, a native of, of this faction. Mm-hmm. And as you get to this tree, uh, you don't see a door, but Bello, you go right up to it, and as you get close, uh, one just sort of appears. It doesn't even, like, grow out. It's just as you get there, there's a door there, and you can go in. Just a hole in the in the building. I just carry on. I yeah, I, as- <laughs> I assumed that. I said that more yeah. for the benefit of Goodbit. Is Goodbit also just going yeah, into yeah, this yeah. thing? Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm following Bello, absolutely. Uh, now, in this, it seems to be... Uh, a tunnel of sorts that leads a little bit up. Not like a, a dark one. It's kind of, you know, a hallway with stairs that form as you go, leading you up into not any sort of lobby or office, but it, it kind of looks a little bit like a church room. You know, there's there's pews and there's what seems to be some sort of altar in there. Very ethereal experience, all with this sort of Alice in Wonderland, again, uh, shifting rainbow iridescent aesthetic. Kind of, I'll make a Destiny reference. If you know, like, Stavathun's Throne World, kind of that, but, like, trippier, which is, a, again, a, a deep cut reference that not a lot of people are going to get, but the people who will, will. <clears throat> and there is, notably, no one there. Great. Okay, I'm not so sure what he was on about there being important things in big buildings, because there's nothing here. Yeah, it's, uh, Pretty empty. Hello? As Goodbid calls out, out of the back of the room, behind sort of the, what's the, there's a word for this, and I'm forgetting what it is, like the stand at the front of churches, not podium, but you, you, uh, lectern, that's the word I'm going for. You see something grow out of the floor behind the lectern. Uh, It does not turn into a full body, but on a sort of shifting 
like like stalk, neck like stalk grows out from behind, pops out from behind the lectern, and you see it shift into the upside down distinctive face of Polnaros. Oh boy! And before Wait, you on, have the last time we saw him, he was like disappeared, right? We haven't seen him even since season one. You have not. And he was briefly in season two, but uh, not as a, a major thing. But this being in, in the kind of, in the, the weird, creepy, ethereal voice of Polaris, but notably a little bit happier than usual, oh, good. says, hello, in response to you. And as it does that, from the walls and the pews and everywhere around the building grow more of the identical heads on stocks that all then say hello in chorus. I hate that. That's terrible. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm so happy I'm not here. <laughs> um, howdy. What brings you to the uh, orthodoxy? Again, they all speak as one. You know what? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we have reason to believe that uh, Bello here mm -hmm. is created by the Orthodoxy in some manner. Uh, the and we're new arrivals. The heads laugh, not all at once in this time, but in a sort of wave. And that the one at the, the lectern laughs, and then the laugh kind of travels down the building, sort of echoing along as the heads laugh in turn. Again, not in like an ominous or scary. Well, it's it's creepy, but it doesn't seem in intentionally evil for for what you can assume there. Uh, as one of them, the kind of the closest one to you, extends itself and looks over Bello, kind of swirling around so that it can get a good look before the <laughs> Bello, one. Bello twirls and thinks, <laughs> always looking at it. Uh, before the uh, the Polnaros head at the lectern speaks alone this time says. I admire your commitment to chaos, little one, but it does not seem you are one of mine. Well, I'm, I'm from not here, so that would make sense. Is this the only reason you've come? We are welcome to interrupt you into the chaos orthodoxy if you would like to follow our ways. Um, I'm actually a part of the chaos orthodoxy already. I'm part of the cool kids club. Uh... uh. The head kind of uh, tilts at that. Uh, again, seeing that it doesn't seem to recognize you. Uh, but it uh, does not seem to protest. I mean, it was w open to welcoming you into the group anyway, so... To what benefits does joining the Orthodoxy bring us if we became members? Uh, the uh, thing, hands sort of grow out of, not the, the stalk, but they grow like out of the, the floor next to it on either side and sort of expand. It goes, we bring the truth in change. It is what we all learned. And now we must share it so that others can understand the reality that which we occupy. Well, the truth, what, what change? Uh, the, the heads laugh again, sort of in a waving chorus. All things change, little one. Okay, um, this How... guy is not making a lot of sense. Well, I said you know, I was about to join a call. I, I kind of agree with you here. Uh, have you, have you always been in the back space, or did you arrive here in a similar fashion to us? Uh, notably, the creature does not say, uh, well, you'll get the exact wording, because we arrived over time. Right. Oh. Mm. Uh, and then, okay. once again, it, it pauses after that, actually, and says, Though our sacred union came later, once we all realized the benefits, mm. start to get the sense and from the heads. Indeed. This might be oh, no. every Polnaros... <laughs> in backspace, fused into this sort that. of gestalt hive mind entity Why would you do that? that has pervaded Matt, this area of that? the station. You had to choose this. 
You had, you I told you guys I was gonna go scary. To I told you guys okay. that this is gonna be look. I'm I have to... we have these cool like <laughs> cyberpunk gothic vampire squids that are right out of a Blade comic, and then we have this eldritch horror dis- just all one sorcery. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna message to Bello mm-hmm. that um, have you instead I, considered that I, therapy? <laughs> that I think we're in over our heads here. I can't afford therapy. Know? I'm gonna work. We're gonna we're gonna work our way out. Um, so I I say um. Uh, so you praise change, and chaos. Do you have any? Does the orthodoxy have any opinions on the current structure of the backspace? Uh, it, it pauses for a moment, you know, thinking, and you see some uh, some of the heads kind of turn to each other and, and whisper things that you can't hear at a distance. Uh, but it is backspace changes frequently, as is the nature of its existence. We try to understand what we can, knowing that not all can be understood. Hmm. We caught wind when we arrived of someone we're not supposed to talk about. Do you know anything about that? Uh, th- this causes the, uh, the, the creature, as I'll call it at this point, to, to pause, the prophet's creature. Uh, the Polnaro's creature, I guess. It, it pauses for a moment, as if trying to as if trying to decide how to respond, which is, you know, not a surprising reaction given the circumstances. Yeah. And before it says, we were formed from the experiences of many, and we know many things. Oh, so great. Someone that knows what we're talking about. So if we needed to be with this person, how would we do that? Uh, that's a good, orderly summit. That's a good name. The Polnari is a, is, I like that. I like that name for this thing. Um, oh, nice. But uh, how would we do that? I do not recommend it, young one, for your safety and ours. Well, but he when... has our kid's child, so we kind of do need to go in. He has our he... kid's child. <laughs> <laughs> our friends to the kid, sorry. <laughs> he has stolen something very valuable to us. Child. Uh, again, it, it, the Palmari pauses for a moment thinking how to respond and again you see some of the heads sort of whispering to each other I pity you truly I do but you do not understand the gravity of that which you seek ah fuck um but if we let let's say because I I I whisper a good bit good bit I'm not supposed to tell them about my special powers, right? Um. Go ahead. So, I, I've been told that I'm the god of space. I don't really know what that means, but I think that's a big change, right? Uh, once again, one of the nearby heads sort of extends over to you and looks you over again uh, before the primary one speaks. There is something different about you. More different than most. I suppose this does mark a period of change, and for that, you have my allegiance, at least until something else changes. Well, if I have your allegiance, can you please tell me how to get to our our friend's kid? Uh, Again, the heads whisper amongst themselves, coming to a, a consensus. I do not know the answers that which you seek, but... In service of another chaos being, I shall see what I can find. Thank you. Do you we I just, shall see we what just we wait can find. here? Uh, it's just, of course, you are welcome in the orthodoxy. You may stay as long as you like. Oh, do you also have a tablet? We can exchange information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, would this... Would this sort of eldritch god that has rooted itself yeah, into a sector me. of a station have this sort of communication? Um, I'm going to say, as you ask, I don't know if you're looking at your tablet while, uh, while you're saying this, but 
whether you are or not, you see uh, a, like a flash of static on the tablet that turns into that shifting iridescent color. And uh, mm. it, that color kind of condenses into, uh, let's just say, like a an app, basically, but one that is notably, like, the wrong shape. Like, everything else, you know, if it's I, iPhones right. and they're all squares, like, this one is a, a, like, fucked up circle. Like, it's notably different from all the others. <laughs> uh, and again, I don't know if you're looking at your tablet or not, but that happens when you ask. Well, thank you. Of course. Excellent questions, Bello. Uh, we will be in contact, and we appreciate your allegiance, alliance, Whatever you want to call this. Friendship. Uh, the, the heads all in unison nod. Great. And then I guess we turn around and leave. Uh, once again, the, the wall which had closed opens up behind you into a tunnel that spits you back out where you were. Though I will say, the um, looking around at the area, it sort of takes on a new connotation now that you know that this is not a tree. This is like a giant amalgamated being that is stretching its form across this entire sector. And that's, that's <laughs> why, uh, with that context, so the bad. slight shifts, <laughs> you realize they could be interpreted as a sort of heartbeat. Mm. Uh, I make sure to praise Bella. I'll be like, Bella, I was, you had me a little worried out there, but you did great. So you'll let me talk more? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I was worried when you started talking, I was like, don't say his name. We learned this, and then you did it. And that was great, Bello. That was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> I learned from my mistakes. Wow. Oh, some people could learn a lot from you, Bello. Mm. So, can, can, you, can you take off the leash now? Do, do I have a leash? <laughs> you have like, like a child leash on Bella. Like a, yeah. You thought that we had made Bella a leash kid? <laughs> there was just rope on, on Time Skimmer and just tied around. Or to, you he know was what? tucked into the strap of Goodbid's hat. <laughs> Once we get out of here, sure, but I don't want to lose you in this chaos church. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think we just head all the way back. I don't think we have anything else we need to... Yeah. Uh, and again, you're welcome Ew. to explore any of these areas more, but uh, if that's all you've got for now, then Glib, what... Yes. What are, what's your status? We'll pick up where we left off. What you doing? But I will say, you um, were the one that struck out on your own, so you get to do something special in a bit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, lovely. Um, a little ominous bit so, there. Yeah, extremely ominous. <laughs> um, so he said that the... Uh, the army will hear my arguments. Yeah. Um, can we... I, I I would imagine Glib would be like, okay, who do I have to talk to? Who? Where, where do I need to go? Where, where do I need to be for this to be heard? Because I want to try and get these people on my side. Uh, so I'm going to save myself the... Uh the voice that for like important scenes and not just the, the that's yeah. fair because uh, this is going to be much more of a character than the kraken was there's going to be a but, lot of talking <laughs> uh, once again the the leader says that he again res respects your your commitment to moving forward in this uh and it's actually screw it he, he likes you at this point he says he can assemble his like war council now immediately they, right. they'll come on his call no matter what wow time. amazing it sounds good uh, so yeah, he. Uh, oh, hmm. though uh, there is one important thing. The um, when he says this, all of his soldiers behind him like jump down into the water, uh, and he follows. Can Glib breathe underwater? <laughs> he doesn't breathe. Right, you're right. You're right. I, wasn't, I forgot about that. Good job. Good job remembering the thing that I that I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I'm also. A I'm a frog, so I'm amphibious, so yeah, I just need to, like, jump all the way was... back up to the surface and come back, even if it wasn't. But, um, I'm like, oh, great. Lovely. Uh, and I jump into the water as well to... I'm actually twice as fast in the water, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's good, because these um, things, again, they have, like, giant... That would make sense. Yeah, I am a frog. Uh, do I want to... Do I want to, okay, I will. I will do that now. Why not? Why not introduce that character a little early? Uh, Lovely. We'll, 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 we're not there yet. Uh, this thing, you you know the scene in Black Panther: Wakanda Forever where Shuri is going into Talakon and it's very nice and peaceful and beautiful. Imagine that, but gothic cyberpunk vampires. 
So not exactly yeah, nice the same. And beautiful and beautiful no. and prepping for war. Uh, so. You get this. You can actually uh, give me a perception check, and I'll give you more info about this place as you're uh, as you're Am going, I going through. into the sunken empire. Nat twenty. Nat twenty. Okay. Damn. Yeah. So uh, I'm on my I'm on, on yeah, my nerves. Glib's right ready. Now. Glib heard that there was like an army ready to fight, and he's like, "All right, cool. This is this is where I'm going. These are my boys." Great. This is exactly uh, what I this is exactly this is the new plan. This is clear like if you did not know a little bit more of the context of what these things were, you would think that this city was actively engaged in a war. Knowing the context, you can tell that this is kind of just like how they are all the time. But again, there are like Great. squadrons going throughout the it's underwater, but streets in, in military formation. Uh, there are large sort of like banners and sigils with the, uh, the necrocephali insignia on them. Uh, as you, since you got the nat 20, you can hear like, as people are, are talking conversations that you overhear nearby, uh, the the abbreviated version of the Necrocephali war cry is a very common thing to hear here. It essentially, from what you can tell, seems to mean like like good luck or Godspeed. Uh, so arms, wings, and fangs is a, uh, a thing you hear quite a bit as you're going around. But gotcha. it's very obvious that this is not a group that you want to fuck with. They, oh, they are also all basically identical. Maybe you can figure out a way to tell them apart, but even the leader is like they're they are using the same shell. So really is fucking crank. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that. Gotcha. Okay, you so are uh, rolling it, rolling into to, uh, techno. Yeah, Atlantis rolling into right techno now. vampire oh. Atlantis. Uh, you are taken to a uh, a larger building in the center that looks. I mean, yeah, imagine, like, a, a big military installation combined with, like, a, a gothic cathedral, basically. Uh, okay. And letting... All right. Notably, as you go into this, uh, you enter, you know, some, some small rooms. You don't get stopped by anybody because you are following someone who seems to be very, very high up in this, this military ranking. So no one, you know, you see, like, gotcha. people saluting as you go by. No one, no one bats an eye at whatever this guy wants to do. But, interestingly, you actually go uh, up instead of going further down, and you uh, go into a, an air pocket that this uh, council room seems to be at. Uh, the war council, as he uh, described it, seems to mostly already be there. There are a couple empty seats, but it's a, a round sort of, a, you know, like, like I'm trying to think of how exactly to describe it, but it's like a, there's a word for it, and I'm, I'm blanking on it. Almost like an arena, I would say, but mm. not one designed, you know, for fighting. There's, like, stands with big chairs that is where the, the War Council people sit. Are we talking, like, multiverse of yeah, madness? Yeah, like where yeah, the, uh... that kind of... But it's a full okay. circle. Yeah. Uh, and you enter through the, gotcha. through the bottom right. of it. Uh, gotcha. you know, there are uh, several necrocephali already here, but there are also members of other species. You actually see some... Um, I'm blanking on the name of my own species that I made up. Uh, the bug people. There, uh, there is ah, one yeah. okay. little. I'll, I'll go through and find that. I know it started with an M because I made based it off the name for termite. Anyway, uh, there is one little collective of them with the, you know the queen and then a few of the drones. Uh, there is again, like I said, several necrocephali. Uh, there are a couple humans. There are a couple things you do not recognize. More a term. Thank you. Look at people know my lore better than I do apparently. Uh, and then, notably, there is a blue aracocra, which is a, a rare sight, something you've never seen before. Underwater? Yeah. What's in it? Well, again, no, you're in an air. The they're in an air bubble now, bird? not oh, actively okay. under. You, they uh, yeah. entered the cathedral and like went up, and that's how they entered this like air bubble war council thing. Aracocra is the yeah. like bird uh, people, yeah. right? A, a blue okay. blue bird person. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Okay. Um, the right. yeah, the, go, the, go uh, the leader <laughs> sits down in his seat and announces mm -hmm. that they're waiting for a few more members to arrive. You can speak to anyone on the council if you would like, or you can just wait for the new ones. Um, I'm going to scan the uh, the members and see if there's like anyone who stands out, anyone who's obviously in a position of power. I'm assuming this is sort of, since it's a board, I'm assuming it works very similarly to, like, everybody's got a vote yeah. sort of thing. The, the uh, necrocephali that you met does seem to be in the highest position of power here. 
Uh, otherwise, the people who gotcha. stand out are probably just like the more unique species. So that would be, again, the Arakakra, uh, the more term. There are, um, and most of it is made up of uh, necrocephali, but there are others. You're not really sure. They all look very scary for what that's worth. I don't think that's, un- okay. you know, that shouldn't be surprising, but they all look very scary. My brain immediately goes to the the bird because he's the weirdest Fair. one to be down here. Bugs, the bugs. Yeah. it kind of makes sense. Humans, you can swim. Birds don't usually do this. Um, I feel I feel like I want a perception check him because I feel like this is an alternate glib, or glib would think this is an alternate glib. Perception check him if um, you want, or you, you can't just talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't trust these guys enough. <laughs> Oh, a five? Okay. That's a that's, blue aircocker. That's a weird. <laughs> that sure is a blue bird. Um, wow. Okay. Um, ooh, can I check for something yeah, specific? I mean, you're going to have to do another roll if you're trying Does to get off. He... Well, well, we'll see. We'll see what it is. Right, it's obvious yeah. I won't. Does he have a, a cloak on? Uh, he does. You're not... It doesn't like particularly resemble Glib's cloak, but it is. It, you could maybe argue a resemblance there. Um, you know, you don't have to perception check that. Okay, can I do another perception? I don't think you have to check perception on? check that. No, I mean, no, that's don't you, you don't need to roll to see if he's wearing right. a cloak. It's somewhat similar. But yeah, it's, not it, the it's same interesting. It, it's, okay, you can't. It does not rule out the possibility of an alternate Glib. It, it kind of is a neutral thing. We'll say. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. All right, so I'm standing in the middle of all of these these people waiting for the final yeah. members to show up, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try and listen in on conversations. If nothing else important happens, then I imagine. Uh, I'll just wait. Yeah, there are there are conversations going on. It doesn't seem like any like a lot of the conversations you don't really have context for. I would say. Uh, I mean, you hear things being discussed, okay. but it, it's necrocephali business related to backspace that you're not familiar with yet. Uh, it is, I guess, okay. worth noting that the the bird is like staring at you. The bird is, is looking at you as well. A oh, little yeah. harder than everyone else. Okay, Glib is definitely going to point that out. Then, like, can I help you? Uh, bird looks down. Perhaps. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and just okay, and and looks away from him just because I'm assuming. He's gonna he's gonna be a the asshole in the room. A funny so assumption. Just uh, <laughs> he kind of continues looking at you and goes, "Were you always like that? Were you?" He sends back. I think I already know the answer to this question, but what's your name? Hmm. I think I kind of want to know yours he first. He leans in. They call me War J. <laughs> Fuck <love> you, Matt. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you guys don't I even know it. why that's great. That is a very specific. <laughs> that is a very deep, deep cut. That is a uh, personal. Yes, that is not a reference. Personal, that is a that is a reference to like me that's knowing Panda as a friend. That is a reference. <laughs> as a oh, friend, I get that... it. That is I a, get it. No, no you don't. More. No, you don't. I guarantee you, you don't. This is very much a reference to a very, like, off-the-cuff conversation we had in the car while and, he was... Uh, and need I remind you, I told you in that car ride, I was going to put an NPC named Warjay in the campaign, and I made you good were. on that promise. I didn't think it was going to be this important. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't I know fi- when it happened, but I heard about Warjay. Okay. I know. Okay. I'll explain. I'll I'll explain more Jay in the uh, in the uh, the after show uh, for anybody because that's okay. <laughs> great. I'll just be like, mm. not the name that I was expecting, but I'll roll with it. Uh, that's amazing. Glib. Just kind of nods. Glib. Uh, again, not surprised. Mm. Sort of sits back in his seat again. Still sort of nodding every now and then. Okay. <laughs> he just looks. He's very obviously annoyed by the the vague <laughs> bird. It's vague just. Bird. And I, I yeah. I, I also I don't know what you guys uh, are talking about. He's a blue jay on a war council. It's. 
if the name makes sense. Obviously. It's yeah, literally it's, he's, that a, he's a blue jay That's on a war council. So I it was a really lazy naming choice in my mm. opinion. I could have honestly done better. Not like I was referencing anything, but eh, whatever. I hope you know Scarlet's going to hear about this. Oh, uh, yeah, I was hoping. I was hoping. <laughs> anyway, uh, regardless, <laughs> after a few more minutes, unless you want to talk to anybody else specifically, uh, the r few remaining yeah. members of the war council uh, file in. And you see uh, the leader kind of take his, his big spear that he has and pound it on the ground, making his large metal clanging sound. And then everyone just looks at you. Okay. Are you guys waiting for me to start this, or do I need to wait for all of y'all? We called you here to speak to us. We do not like to waste our time. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to ask you all a very simple question. In the simplest of terms, what's the end goal here? Uh, they, there's some whispers around the council. That wasn't the question that they were expecting mm -hmm. you to ask, but again, you think that sort of given their nature, they respect it. Uh, before okay. the leader, you know, as the sort of representative of this mm -hmm. speaks up, says, we do not know when the war we escaped from will reach us, but we know it shall, and we shall be ready when the time comes. Okay. What started that war? Uh, because... The same thing that started it for you. The arrival of nothing. Hmm. Do anyone, does anyone in this room have a single plan on how to stop that? Uh, there is, I want you to roll me an insight check. Okay. Nineteen, 19. is very good. So, the leader does not immediately respond. But as you look around the room... You can see from, from various members, like the Moraturum Queen, and then just as much as you can tell from other mm -hmm. Necrocephali, there seem to be, like, I guess they really only, they don't have faces. So the Moraturum Queen, like, almost smirks. You get the sense that that might have been a question other members of this council have asked and not gotten satisfactory answers mm -hmm. to. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, as I look around and see, like, people sort of chuckling or, like, people being grumpy about the fact that, like, I uh, grade another one of these fucking guys. Um, uh, Glib goes, everyone in this room got here by traveling too far back. Everyone here started with a plan, and I'm simply asking what the plan of this group is. And if you can't give me an answer then you don't have one. At this, the leader, uh, clearly getting annoyed again, speaks up mm -hmm. and gives a, a speech that I won't try to improv off the cuff, mostly because it is, inten it, well, not intentionally, but it is not as impressive as you would expect. Uh, it is something about, you know, the strength and the nation that they've built and the, the mighty legions of the Necrocephali facing any threat that comes to hunt them down again. And that, that kind of just ends. It. It's a lot of a lot of blustering and a lot of attempt at intimidation without a lot of reasoning to back it. it up. Which again, the okay. council, or at least some members of the council, they say they seem split. But some of them, about that. yeah, are not okay. pleased. Okay. Um, as I listen to him, I let him trail off, and there's a moment of, of quiet, and then I point at him and I go. He's in it for the power. He likes that all of you are here for him. I don't quite like that. And I can tell that some of you don't either. And if you're not in it for the power, I want you to tell me what you are fucking doing. Is this a coup? What an, an incredibly charged and bold assumption to make in episode one. Um, 
the leader. <laughs> I, I need you to make a dexterity save. <laughs> oh, am I about to die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 17. the leader, without a second's hesitation, leaps off of his chair, like wings unfurling to their max span, mm -hmm. as he slams down in front of you in the same moment, untangling one of his coiled arms and immediately extending it and wrapping you up again before holding you above the ground, because he's taller than you, holding you again like an inch in yep. front of his face. Uh, and just stares at you for a moment. Uh, I want you to make an insight check for me yeah. really quick before he talks. Okay, okay. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. That's enough to get you a little, like... Remember, he said something about Blob, his father, presumably being traumatized mm -hmm. and dying in this war. So, yeah, he is... Yep. From what you can tell, not necessarily just doing this for power. Though I'm, you might have known that already when mm -hmm. you were trying to, to start your little coup. Uh, mm -hmm. He just, he stares at you again for a, a solid like, few seconds. He goes, You come to my realm. I graciously assemble my council. And you insult me. Mm -hmm. I come to your realm in front of your council, and I offer you a fucking plan. Now you can either let me go and hear it out, or you can kill me and watch as the leader of this entire station murders every single person in your entire empire. Now are you going to let me help, or are you going to keep Blustering. Since you do not know whether what you just said was true, make me a bluff check. Or an intimidation. I'll give you intimidation for that. God what? damn. 21. 20, I really 21. thought you just said one for a second, and I was going to be like, oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, 21. 21. 21 is solid. Uh, the counts... You... you clearly see a stir among the council from from both the uh, the the loyal and the dissenters at what you've just said as uh, the leader does not let you go but like lowers you back down to the ground at the very least it says what is yeah. this yeah you're on the ground now the gr what is this about a leader oh so you have all of this and not all the knowledge. Big surprise there. Does anyone in this room know a creature by the name of Emmy or Emerald? Uh, mm, I was going to say make me an insight check, but I don't think it matters in this case. Uh, you don't see any recognition among the council at the very least. That's right. My group... I don't know about all of yours, but my group had to sign some sort of document, had to give an agreement to not talk about him before we showed up, and I can tell by the blank stares that I'm getting that none of you received that talk, because none of you know how important he is. Am I wrong? Uh, intimidation check me again. Okay. That'll be a nat twenty. Oh All right. my gosh, he's a uh, menace. Now, he's a in, menace. in many circumstances, if a random stranger walked up to this very powerful war council of a very powerful little space empire, they would be probably laughed out of of the room and maybe executed for this kind of talk. Right. However, it is established that Glib and the actions of Glib, even though they were not the exact start of the Necrocephali, they are important. Without Glib, the Necrocephali do not exist as they do in Backspace right now. Which means mm -hmm. they give more credence to the things that you're saying. Uh, 
no glib. You can kind of get the idea. You're not certain for certain, but no glib has come this way before. They know that glibs are are there, but like mm-hmm. this this is a very specific combination of of things. You get the sense because you are the kraken, the frog, yeah. the death god, all the, all the things that align very similarly with their glib are reflected in you. So right. the leader lets you go. Uh, his tentacles unwrap from you and, you know, recoil into an arm shape uh, as he unfurls mm-hmm. his wings again and with sort of one big push uh, flaps himself back up into his into his little throne. And he says, mm-hmm. We will continue to hear you out and investigate this further. But I will remind you to hold your tongue. And I'll remind you who has the information you need. Uh, I turn to the the council and I go, I know there are two things on this space station that either you don't know about or have not been here before. One of them is the person who runs it. He's the god of dreams. He has himself... And his younger... I was, son, I was like, are you full yeah, on God lying to these people? Right. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no I'm not lying. He's, uh, the he is the God of Secrets. Yeah. He is the God of Secrets. He and his younger self are both here. And as the God of Secrets, you can imagine that not many people know about him. But I can guarantee you that he knows about all of you. And the second thing is I have a being that has never been to this place. I know where they are, I know who they're with, and I know just how powerful they are. I know how we can get our power back. I know how we can stop the nothing. And I know exactly who we have to kill to get it. Uh... Arms, wings, and fangs, are you with me? There is a... Holy shit, There man. is a brief pause before someone, with the, the circular nature of the, uh, of the room, makes it hard to tell exactly who. But you hear gradually building applause. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Clearly... You've said a lot of things that are, are very, very in line with the necrocephalized beliefs. Uh, you did good. Okay. You did good there. Uh, the good. leader, who notably was more in favor of you at the beginning, seems so pissed. Again, they don't have faces, not faces in a sense that can show expression, <laughs> but he mm-hmm. does not seem pleased with you at all. But he also is capable of reading the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he, he after after a pause that is notably longer than it should be, uh, he finally speaks mm-hmm. again and says, "If what you say is true, bring this companion to us." Done. Uh. And I swim. I, I All right. leave. Uh, no one stops you. Again, you are... Oh my if God. you need directions back to the entrance, they are happy to provide. Uh, but... I can see. All right, now we get to... I can see things that no one else can now. <laughs> yeah. So. I love... I, I gotta say, I was not expecting a, an attempted coup in episode one. I'm so here for it. <laughs> and I'm so glad. I, I'm so incredibly glad I thought to make the merch available first. <laughs> Yeah, I was right. <laughs> I knew the audience. I was like, I know this is going to be something that will turn out cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, this scene is not done yet, actually. Uh, we got a little bit more to do yeah. right here. So nobody stops you as you uh, as you return to the uh, the train that took you there. Uh, and you again, there's no one on the train. It, it, there's a notable like wait, I think, uh, as you're you know you push the button and and wait for the train to arrive, which uh, this one is not on as regular a track as the others, let's say. Uh, Mm -hmm. I need you to make me a perception check as you're waiting. Gotcha. I'm getting 
fucking followed by this guy. Damn it. That's an, an eight. An eight. All right. So you do see something. And if you see something with an eight, that's either really good or really bad. Uh, off mm. in <laughs> the distance, sort of just at the fringes of what your vision will allow, uh, even with the, the dark vision, it's still very dark here. And you're up near the surface, so it's a little... Uh, seeing is a little weird. Ooh, no. Can't I see now that Blob got... Uh, yes, but like this, this is like up. Like... It's not down into the water. It's like up near. Ah, okay. You you presume that this is a dome like the others. I guess it, it can be assumed, but most of the the mm -hmm. below, you see a figure floating above you off in the distance. Now this figure, uh, it resembles for a moment, as scary as this is, one of the blank. But interestingly, there is one notable difference for the blank. Well, the blank are these you know sort of just empty outlines with singular stars in the middle of their faces rather than the one singular eye this one has two uh, two smaller ones that uh, are in the place that uh, you know eyes on a normal human would be and from these eyes comes a constant river of black tears that stream down the being's face and wrap around it floating off the body in coils that envelop the creature's entire form now this took me a second to describe visually, mm. but I have a very important question about Glib's reaction. How long do you look at it? Okay. I didn't really look at it. I saw. Are it you looking at it, or are you immediately turning your back? Um, I think the second I would recognize a blank, seeing as the last time that I saw a blank, um, I would immediately like lock eyes at the ground. I can see it in the corner of my eye. I'm used to talking to Emmy, who never approaches the middle of my sight. So I immediately just and lock in and can feel its eyes staring. Other at me. than the tears that continue constantly flowing, coiling, and then seemingly vanishing into nothing, it does not move. It just yeah. stares at you. Uh, are you going to kill me too? The creature does not react in any sense. Um, I try and move my head to see if it stays in the place that I can see it or if it's right off to the it corner. It stays of my at eyes. a fixed point. It does not move like any. Okay, and even if I move my head back, it's still there. It's not like no, gone it is once still I there. look away. It does not move or, or disappear okay. or anything like that. Okay. Do you want something or are you just going to stand? It does not there? move, it does not react. Hmm. Uh, Glib is not going to attack it because the last time he saw something attack or even like mildly piss off a blank they disappeared um, uh, Glib is going to maintain locked where his eyes is on, are on the ground and simply wait it out because if it could, ki if it wanted to kill him, it would, and it's not responding to him. Eventually, if you're just waiting there, the train arrives. The creature mm -hmm. again does not move. Um, Glib, waiting at the train door, still staring at the ground, uh, says, "If your plan is to kill me before I can get to you." then I would appreciate if you did it now. Because everything I do after this will be your fault if you don't. Once again, this thing has no reaction whatsoever. It just hovers there, staring at you. And Glib looks back at the ground and goes, All right. Then their bodies are on your hands. Keep crying. And he gets on the, the train. To, yeah. to leave. Uh, a moment later, the train leaves, and it returns back to the uh, the main central hub. All right. Oh man. There's sirens going by my house, yeah, and that feels so thematic. I don't know if you can hear them on the mic, but. <laughs> um. 
are we sticking with me or are we cutting back uh, to them? I mean, at this point, I uh, you were told to find them, and I think that that was up? the... If I was wrong, but yeah. That was the intention, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want... Here we go. We can flavor this. Uh, you get a text, um, and it's simply... I think I know how to find Emerald. I'm not sure, but I think I know where to start. Meet I... me at the uh, meet me at the the place where we split up. I text back. Me too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, head over. Yeah. No, no other mysterious figures show up on the way. You meet up without any issues. Okay. Um, this is for the audience. I... This isn't for uh, uh, the the other players. But uh, Glib has a a noticeable shift in demeanor the second that he uh, approaches the building, uh, going from stone cold to immediately switching back to like season two angry jittery Glib. I was just like... going to say I have to now go into good bit. And... Act like I didn't just experience horrors beyond comprehension. <laughs> oh, everyone um, was experiencing various horrors beyond comprehension. But, We've got a taste. You know, I got no reason. Anyway, Glib! <laughs> okay. What, what'd you find? What the fuck do you mean you got a job? What does a job... Why did you get a job? Why listen, do you I have a job? Listen, I don't know how long we're going to be in here. I just, I'm just i going to make Mercury do it. <laughs> Uh, we gotta get some bankroll in case we need to buy anything. We gotta get bankroll. You know? Why do we need bankroll? We're not gonna be here very yeah, long. Yeah, but we still if need If we need bankroll, we'll fucking kill someone. That's. <laughs> we got infinite time to be in here, and we'll still be here before Dream is born. So, you know, I, 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 it wouldn't hurt to have some money if we need it. I'm not planning on waiting. I don't know about you. That's not I mean, my me goal. Either. But you gotta think contingency. Apparently not. You got a fucking job! Okay, but listen, we also visited, I guess, Bellow's friends? I don't know. The, the Chaos Orthodoxy was a weird place. I do not recommend going there, but wait, wait, because wait, I thought, Bellow... I thought, you the, I thought, she was, I thought he was the only one here. Yeah. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, 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 important detail. Chorus of Polnaris's. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, they like all speak in harmonies. It's very actually more dissonance. Uh, Paul is here? I thought Paul was dead. Me too, man. But uh, I think every single Paul is at the Chaos Orthodoxy. What? They were all. I don't know, but they like Bello. Tell them how much they liked you, Bella. Yeah, I think we're going to be good friends. We've been texting all the whole right here. Look. And it's just all pictograms. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the... Is it all sent from Bello? Uh, <laughs> I think Pulneros also responds. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> I have a, a. I know what this is. This is the. Uh, I imagine there's like ten. For, well, I say I imagine. I'm the DM. What I imagine is canon. Uh, there's like ten <laughs> messages from Bella, and then on the other side of the conversation, there is a single upside down smiley face. <laughs> oh fuck off! Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Polnaros, there's so, all of them hilarious. Just gotta get them talking. So basically, they promised because Bello's so chill, and we're so chill, that they would help us find a way to Emmy. Okay, alright, that's something. Do they have a timeline on that? I don't imagine that a church gets up and walks around. I'm not sure that it has a real network. <laughs> we don't got a timeline, but, you know... Bellows keeping them occupied, so when they know, we'll know. <laughs> Just like several laughing emojis. Can you ask? <laughs> Bello. Bello, <laughs> what? <laughs> you. Where? Can you, like, ask them, like, ETA when we're gonna know about this? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I said, um, a clock emoji? A uh, question mark? <laughs> Um, exclamation emoji. This is the new Mercury doesn't know how the message spell limit works in season three, <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> oh my god. Just how long did it take him to respond to your last <laughs> that? Uh, 
You know, I'm not really great with time. Uh, all of the fate of the universe is hinged uh, on the back uh, of a dump with wings. Okay. Said I get it. But all what right. Did you, what did you turn up? We were kind of. We didn't get I, much. I, I, I'm not sure if you guys took one of these. I found a room on a rail, and it's. Uh, it took me to a dark room, like a mine shaft. Kinda. It took me to a dark room with a lake, oh. and I swam to the bottom of the lake, and there's like a tube, and I didn't go through the tube, but I'm pretty sure that the tube goes somewhere higher than we are now. Interesting. Left out a little bit of important thing in that, in that descriptor, <laughs> which I'm assuming was intentional. He's not lying to me. He's not. I'm skirting, yeah, I'm I'm skirting the line where I don't have to do a deception just check. Did, yeah, it's all true. Just didn't mention the bunnies. Well, I mean, I don't know why you're getting all the tussle. That doesn't sound amazing either. But did, at did least you need any more knots down great. there? I did not look for another glib. I, I don't want to talk to another glib. Uh. I, <laughs> might have. I I am a rough person to talk to. You know. I don't want. I don't want to talk to another me. That like, is valid. I got a meeting with the board of directors at Good Bid Unlimited, um, and I plan on mm. doing some fancy tomfoolery to, to maybe find out some more about this whole situation. Okay. But that's that's but beneficial. That's, tomorrow. that's beneficial. That's, I got you. I feel like that might be our. No, I don't want. I don't want to go through. <laughs> that tube until we know because that might lead straight up to emmy's office and i don't want to sure for sure i don't want to risk that i would rather know more about how this place runs first and then and then we can go and 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 check out what what i found. for sure all right well let's re let's report back see how old mercury and doc are doing i guess it's a good plan that is a good plan we should probably go and check i would quite like stick back if i'm going to be perfectly honest if we can't portal the fuck out of here with this stupid goddamn time machine. and i would also like my pet rock back oh yeah what aren't you in space yeah but it's my pet rock how did you even carry a pet rock you have wit it doesn't matter let's go back i to the have show. six <laughs> arms which are also <laughs> legs Just shout, I uh, so yeah, you guys are able to uh, to make your way back to the ship. Do you, out of curiosity, do you remember what dock number you were in? Fuck no. <laughs> uh, was no. It, a reference? Um, it was a number that I picked arbitrarily last season. So I'm not going to I'm not going to fuck. actually hinge anything on that. But I <laughs> no. I just nope. wanted to test you out. No. All right, uh, I was. It was I Doc 3, doc which number. I only remember because I rewatched the end of the episode to make sure I got all my continuity right. Oh, uh, God. Uh, okay. that's it. You get back to uh, the ship. Time Skimmer is... is... Do we... I do have a I do have a question. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a layup to see if you want to have any All fun right. interactions, Matt. Do we run into anyone we would know on the way uh, back? I, yeah, I guess I should ask. Are you like? You see figures that you're familiar with. If you want to have a conversation with anybody, you can. No one seems to like. No one who is a resident of Backspace is that surprised by most of you. Because even Bello, for being right. a weird entity, is mm. like people are like, what's that? But they pass off as a chaos orthodoxy creation. So if you So I'm right. assuming I don't gotcha. know I don't see any B team members because they would know who I was. Uh not B team members in like it, you you see f similar figures, but none like not the literal exact ones at the very least like it might be like a Zalkus or a lady katarina walking around but uh not you know they don't seem to recognize you okay we're all right. bad turbs right now right. so i don't know if it's a good idea to talk to them uh, oh. I, I don't want to talk to other people <laughs> either so yeah we'll just... i had to there will be lots of fun Kinda. variant nonsense but i got another thing i gotta do in session one so <laughs> We all head back, I guess. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we we end up making it back to session three. To, uh, you uh, three you head back to the uh, the ship and you enter the the same way you came out. Notably, the little room that you 
had the the little like legal consultation in is not there. The door just opens directly into the garage, and Time Skimmer is there. Cool. Okay. Good. Uh, Good. Okay. Um, I yell out, Doc! There was no response. Ah, uh, he's probably having a mental breakdown in the basement. I swear to God. Uh, pop it! There is no response. People I've met before. There is no response. Oh, great. Can we sweep the ship, please? Yeah. You sweep the ship, yeah, yeah. find no sign of anyone you know. Ah, fuck. You gave them one rule! I said, stay with the fucking ship! Um, <laughs> Artie! Uh, Artie does appear manifesting on the, the sort of wall screen. How may I help you? Where's our rest of our crew? Uh, you see kind of like a little like scanning sort of indicator come up next to Artie and goes, no one else is present in the garage as it stands. Oh, no shit. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, dip fuck. Where the hell did they go? <laughs> I'm not sure of that information. Uh, you're the ship. What do you mean you I can scan know? for designations Doc, Mercury, Dramaticus, etc. If you like. Yeah, I would like you to search for our <laughs> Doc Mercury dramatic uh, etc. You see calculations <laughs> start to happen on the screen, uh, and Artie pulls up the the information, not specific to your iterations, just the amounts on the ship mm. or on the station. Fucker. Did we have to walk past lawyer guy to get back in here? No, that room was not there. It just opened directly okay. into the. Okay. Do you the think classic this interrogation is... is out the window. Do you think this is repercussions? Yeah. That's a big word, Bella. <laughs> repercussions. I don't know. Did you talk to anybody? Uh, he's worried that. <sighs> did I actually tell Glib what Bello did in the in the? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, you said we had a situation. Um, <laughs> back in the back in like the town square sort of area. Bella walked up to a good bid and asked for where to find who shall not be named. Uh, and they ran away. Are you fucking kidding? No. You asked a notoriously infamous huckster, somebody who will do anything to get ahead. You asked them the one piece of information we are never supposed to say and you didn't fucking kill them immediately? It's also well, I, I thought Flippin was very nice so I thought many of them would be also very nice. You shut the fuck I up, I didn't want to be on the run Flippin, the minute we got here. Get it's also worth noting, I'm gonna I'm you interrupt you here. What? You're I'm gonna interrupt you here to note that Archie in chat also pointed out that I believe Glib did text using the government tablet um, and said I said Emmy I didn't say Emerald which I'm assuming I'm pretty the, sure you did say you, Emerald you did you did you definitely said Emerald you, you definitely did oh fuck well Glib would definitely pass us on, on this <laughs> that is entirely in character for who he is this is definitely well, Glib would even not know because what would we know about government mandated devices that's a uh, you know what yeah, great bro, point we know great this point right? The only thing we know is spies and speeches. Yeah. We, we don't, don't know, know that you can that analyze our fucking monitor these. Excellent point. Yeah, I, me, I, re me I retract my statement. Like, that's reading gonna come back to bite us in that. the ass, but I'm just like, Bello has an intelligence of eight, yeah. so I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Immediately. What do you mean you didn't fuck? Good bit, you know who the fuck you are. Yeah. You know that you would sell that information. Listen, I got... Oh. I didn't, he seemed like a coward to me. He didn't seem like he was running to tell. He seemed like he was running away Artie. from the problem. I don't know how powerful this guy is, but I don't even think that information is worth selling around here. The guy that turned and ran the second that you said a name? You don't think that that information is worth it? I anything? think he was in fear for his life. That's what I think. Artie! Artie appears. Well, I guess we're still there probably, but... Yeah. You too. What the fuck did he look like? <laughs> good, good. Well, it looked like me. Except he had a green suit on. Thanks, yeah, genius. Weirdly, I, this is that. the one that I gave a specific descriptor to. He got a green suit on and a golden glove, okay? Artie, 
any good bids that wear fucking garish leprechaun colors. <laughs> Artie pulls up. It uh, was pretty garish. Artie pulls up like a picture is... of a Mr. Goodbid just straight up in a leprechaun costume. <laughs> that one's on me. I'll grant you that. That one's on me. What a fashion statement that one. Jesus. <laughs> the mustache is red. Dude, you don't get the opinion. <laughs> um, dude, is there any good bids? on Backspace right now that have a green suit and a golden glove. Uh, yeah, Archie pulls up like a the uh, space book. Uh, I'm sure I did not come up with that joke, so I can't take credit for it, but profile oh of a, a good bid that seems to, as best you can tell, given the vagueness of the situation, match the descriptor. Mm. Can I perceive if... I don't know. <laughs> Can I perceive if it's the same guy? It, it seems to be. I don't know how much a perception check is going to get you from just looking at like, yeah. still images. Okay. All right. Does that look enough like that him? Looks like him. That looks like him to me. Great. Artie, where is this guy? Uh, I'm trying. To, did I say that like precise locational data was available last time? Uh, it sure. We'll say it is. I guess we'll make this a horrible surveillance state. Um, <laughs> uh. Listen, it's probably 100% certain that Gliv gave away <laughs> this information and not this guy. So, yeah, definitely a surveillance. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, the... I'm scared. The, I, I'll say this. The, the Artie does not give, like, precise locational data. I, I, mostly because I don't want to have to deal with the lore implications of having that be an option. But gives you, like, the, yeah. the office location of this good bid. Places where the good bid could be found. Is it, is it in the, uh, uh, the good sure. bid union? Good bit unlimited, yeah. Okay. Is... Awesome. Amazing. Can we get this specific good bids, like, identification? Like, can we ask for this guy? Does he have a specific name you get his, like, designation? Office phone extension. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay. I, I turn back to good bit. You know where this is? Yes. Yeah. Great. We're going to go to that motherfucker's office, and we're going to make sure that he ain't say shit. Because apparently, I'm the only one who's worried about anonymity! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It sounds like a plan, okay? Let's go. In the background on Goodbit's Good. tablet, uh, Bello is just messaging Polneros. Like, frog emoji, angry emoji, <laughs> arrow emoji, butterfly. Butterfly emoji again, oh. sad face emoji, question mark. <laughs> uh, once again, you receive a single upside down smiley face in response. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I should oh, apologize never, too. No, <laughs> oh my god! I do like this idea that like like Bell. Actually, you know what? You know what? That's one hundred percent canon now because it's funny. Bello, because of your chaos connections, you are actually able to interpret the intent behind these messages. To anyone else, it's just like. <laughs> There's a single emoji, but Bello, since you are connected to this sort of energy, you you actually can canonically. You are the only one that can interpret Polnaris's text, or the Polnaris <laughs> text. I speak code. Everything's um, in code. My my dad is the only data that's encrypted. See, I'm telling you, I'm tell I gotta mix. It. The goal is to mix in horror and then comic book stupidness. <laughs> I I articulate to Glib on our way there mm -hmm. that um, I can modify memory, and so. If need be, we can just have him forget the last 24 hours. Amazing. That's lovely. Except for the fact that our friends are already gone, so he definitely sets uh, the show. Already. One problem after the other. <laughs> Let's move. Exactly. Amazing. All I want to know is to make sure he didn't say anything, and if he did say something, who he told it to, where they are, and then that this motherfucker doesn't breathe right. anymore. That is at the goal. The, at, maybe at best... We find out who they told, we get higher up to who is actually running things around here. Don't spin this ah, like you're this. That sounds like, like this good, good business idea. to me. <laughs> That's not good business. Shut the fuck up. You <laughs> fucked up, okay? <laughs> so I, I assume you guys are, are going to Good But Unlimited as fast as possible. Yes. Uh, All right, so yes, 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 yes. Uh, you guys rush to the Run door, it. open it. And do not come out in the same place that you did last time. You are in a fairly large and ornate office, but full of sort of trinkets and artifacts that you don't recognize or fully understand. And sitting behind a desk in a very nice chair is Emerald. 
Though notably, oh. Emerald seems more solid than usual, than the last time you saw him. More, more put together, more established in the world, if that makes sense. And he just kind of puts his hands together and leans over the desk and looks at you. I'm immediately fired. I, yeah, that would make sense. The second I recognize who it is, I'm immediately going for the kill. Oh, Go for it. Oh, brother. Um, I have three of these, so one misses. Well, one got an 11, one got a 22, and the other got a... Also, 20, two got 22 and one got 11. Even if they hit where Emerald seems to be, they don't seem to have any effect. Whether that's mm. an illusion caused by his powers or something else, you're not sure. But there's clearly more at play here. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, how far five away feet? is he? Five to five, five to feet? ten. Okay, great. I'm going to try and jump on top of the chair. <laughs> I'm going to try and jump on. Uh, top of the chair. Lasers didn't work. I'll uh, kill dexterity myself. check. Oh my god! Not even. Okay. <laughs> oh man. I miss. I uh, yeah. <laughs> you j- actually you jump at uh, Emerald, go right through his body, like vanish into his body and sort of come out of where the door was, landing on the ground. Okay. I, eyes are glowing. I'm growling with anger now, but I am not going to uh, up again. After a moment, Emerald speaks, notably not in the same sort of raspy, hard-to-understand voice as, as usual, maybe due to whatever is causing his form to be more stabilized. He speaks in a, a more normal tone. Goes, Are you finished? I swear by the end of this fucking day, I'm going to kill you. I will find you, and I will burn this fucking place to the ground. I highly doubt that. There was one rule. One rule. Not even that difficult of one. And you broke it immediately, in multiple times. I have no idea what you're talking about. You think I give a fuck about your rules? Uh, At that, uh, at Glib's words, Emerald stands up and goes, You should. You are dealing with forces beyond your comprehension. I don't fucking care. Where's the kid? The child is fine. As I said earlier, I won't hurt myself. I meant that honestly. I don't... You didn't answer the question. Don't understand the danger of having multiple beings with my power in the same place. You don't understand anything. You have no. A fire again. I'm a go fire for again. It. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Again, twenty-eight. So it hits him. I assume uh, it hits him. Do but anything. again, in, in this case, for reasons that you are not entirely certain of, nothing happens. It sort of just vanishes. Uh. The body is more solid, but it kind of like, like dissipates into smoke when the the bolt hits it, and then just reforms. <clears throat> ah, okay. Mm. Um, that that was yeah. the only play. I just I <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, why don't you inform us on what we don't know, so we can know a little more? He leans back as he had come uh, come around to the front of the desk, and he leans back and kind of like sits against the front of his desk and goes, "Ironic that you should ask for more information when that was the one thing that had prevented you from having." Well, you know, it never hurts to ask. We're going to find it eventually. Right. On that note, no. I don't think you are. Because, again, you have no idea what you are meddling in. You came here, what, two hours ago? You have no idea the nature of this place. You don't even know the nature of your enemy. You don't know who I am beyond a different version of the helpless child you picked up along your previous adventures. You know nothing, and yet you think you have the right to meddle in my affairs. You seem to be mistaken with us, as well. You seem to think that that matters. You seem to think that any of this matters. You seem to think that we give a single fuck about your affairs. My goal is to end you, to get what's mine back, and to fix my fucking timeline. I don't care what your goal is. I don't care who you are. I don't care about any of that. None of this will matter in less than a day if I have my way. Emerald pauses. Does not look particularly intimidated, but pauses nonetheless. 
and then starts laughing very loudly, genuinely amused by this, before very abruptly slamming his fist down on his desk and stopping the laughter in the same moment. He goes, I do know what you want, Glebe. I know what all of you want. I know everything that happens here. I'm the god of secrets, and you clearly do not understand the gravity that comes with that position. Oh my god. Anybody else feel helpless out of character? <laughs> oh don't don't worry. Don't worry. Oh yeah. This is uh I'm still, I'm still in glitch. This is what we call I, I, the season say, the season setup. I say listen man, if you know everything then you know the one thing that I don't know about the rest of this space, but the one thing our party has is the audacity to challenge the man above. Right now, that's you. <sighs> I wish. I wish it was me. I really do. That's why I built this place. But I'm not top dog in this situation, if you want to phrase it like that. I'm powerful, yes. More powerful than you understand, clearly. But I am protecting you. <sighs> sure got a funny way of showing it. He, again, sits back on the desk at that comment. Seems exasperated, and then starts speaking again after a moment. He goes, do you know how much of your lives is based around secrets? You hear the word and you think it's a, a simple concept, but there's more to it than that. A secret is not just something that one keeps to themselves. It is part of oneself. If something is known to the self, or known to a small group and not known to others, that is a secret, and secrets are my realm. I know everything. I am present in every aspect of your helpless mortal lives. As I said, I am not the helpless child that you picked up. I am everywhere. I am in the whispered rumors that begin your wars and the secret shame that you feel in the dark of night. I am everywhere. Your secrets are mine and this is my burden to bear forever. Now if you would kindly just shut up Stop questioning, and please try for a microsecond to understand the vast expanse of knowledge that I hold, which you will never fathom. He was kind of spitting there. He was kind of... <laughs> he was kind of... I wish I had a come back to that, but I, I'm pretty sure everything you said was just true. <laughs> I just... Oh, the bell raises his foot of hand. <laughs> He does not speak, but he looks over at Bello. <laughs> do, do the blanks know about this place? I'm surprised that you finally ask a good question. I believe they might know, but they can't enter. I can know that for certain. Why not? He sits back again. This is a hard concept to understand. The blank are not beings. They have no will of their own, no agency, no form. Think, if you will, of a bubble blown underwater. You see, when you, when you put air into water, it wants to spread, it wants to expand out, disperse. That is air's natural choice. But water, it, it holds it in, right? It does not want the air expanding and taking over its form, and so it applies pressure to it, makes a bubble forces it into a smaller, circular form. This is what the blank are, a bubble of nothing forced into reality. You take a pocket of non-existence and you force it into existence itself. Reality doesn't want that, so it pushes back. It forces the nothingness into a bubble. But, of course, it's more complicated than just water and air. It's not just making it a circular shape. When you force existence onto non-existence, it... How do I put this? The blank are a boundary. The true blank is the inside, something you cannot perceive, non-existence in its purest, most unfathomable form. But the boundary on the edge of them is reality holding them in, giving them a shape, giving them rudimentary thought. This place, he gestures around him, presumably meaning backspace as a whole, is not reality, not in the same sense. It is my realm, a realm of secrets, and secrets are not so easy to destroy in the same sense. Uh, Glib is smiling now. What? What has you so amused? I know a secret you don't. 
You're you're really soft. I know a secret that you don't. He he doesn't even look like amused or annoyed. It's just the the demeanor that that Emerald has in this moment is one of you know someone who has just heard someone say something objectively wrong. You know. <laughs> Submarine. Yeah, we can't hear you, Panda. <laughs> I'm turning you ah. up on the stream, but come on. Sorry. No, I think it's like a oh. mic thing. Like maybe. Maybe. Hold on. Like something clicked and now you're, you're quiet. Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me now? Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, your submarine is not impenetrable. Please, then. I saw one. He starts to to interrupt and then pause and goes. No, you didn't. Yeah. That's an impossibility. I did. Look at me. Look me in my eyes. Am I lying? He gets down, uh, like leans over to be on your eye level, unintimidated, and says, I don't think you understand me, little frog. I am very well acquainted with the term impossibility. I do not use it lightly, and I do not exaggerate. It is impossible on a metaphysical level... For the blank to access this area, it cannot happen. There are many strange beings here, all sorts of things from infinite timelines. You've probably just seen one of them and mistaken it for something else. I don't think you understand me. You don't mistake that. And if you bring anyone, anyone in here to tell me if I'm lying, then you'll know I'm not. And I'll tell you right now that if I was... You'd be able to tell, right? Because my secret would be that I didn't. So tell me, God of secrets, am I lying? Uh, he again sort of leans down and goes, I'll tell you this. I believe you think you saw one. But I am telling you as the authority on the subject, you did not. Mm. And then he sees Bello raising be. his hand mm. and turns, What? Do you have any idea who I am? It looks... I wouldn't tell the guy who could disappear people back. <laughs> he, he, Do you know who I am? <laughs> he looks you up no. and down. And goes, no. Interestingly, no. But... I'm sure there's a reason for it. One I'll look into... That's our secret. So that's two things you don't know. He leans back again on the chair, once again, seemingly just exasperated, and says, I thought we could do this diplomatically. Really, I did. I was foolish to assume so, but I wanted to give you a chance. Sue me. If you, if you really are Emerald, you knew this wasn't going to work. Forgive me for having some level of faith in you. Anyway, if it's come to this, then I suppose this is where it was always going to end. And the room goes white. <sighs> At this moment, hmm. all of you find yourselves not in uh, the the office anymore. Uh, Goodbit, you are in yeah. an office at Goodbit Unlimited. Uh, cool. Bello, you are in the Chaos Orthodoxy, somewhere a room that you don't recognize. Uh, and Glib, you're somewhere dark, but you are not sure where it is. Your memories are gone. Entirely. You woke up here. Basic skills, of course, basic understanding of where you are. Good bid, presumably you're an employee of Unlimited. Uh, yeah. Bellow, the chaos and orthodoxy, it likes change. This isn't something incredibly odd. Mm -hmm. Glib, again, you're not sure where you are. And uh, I'll do this sort of in a, a movie-style format. A caption appears on the bottom of the screens, metaphorically, that says one month later. <laughs> wow. This, Just like that, And huh? at this point, we'll cut back to Goodbit. In your office, you hear a knock at the door. Oh, okay, we're still going. Oh, okay. we're not done yet. <laughs> that was the end of the episode. We're not done yet. we got one more thing to do. <clears throat> Come in. Uh, the door opens. At... Am I, hold on, quick question. Am I aware that I remember nothing as I come to or am I just suddenly like 
for now, is it we'll, just like a weird feeling, or for now we'll say it's like, it's like also does memories memories are gone mean everything from the moment we woke up before is gone, or do you mean everything in between the office and one month later? Backspace is all that is in your heads. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> and so I don't. I'm not here. Like, where's all my memories? I'm just here, and I'm like, hmm. exactly. Got it. So. Where am I? Who am I? Uh, what is there's this? a knock on oh, the door. Oh, my job. <clears throat> you say, come in. Yeah. The door opens. Uh, and a voice rings out. A voice that you don't you don't recognize, but it sounds somehow familiar. It opens to reveal a figure that you have never seen before. It says, uh, excuse me, I believe we might know each other and I could use some help. My name is Sticks Bradley. And with that, Ugh. that will be the end of Season 3, Episode <laughs> 1. And I'm going to go ahead and say... Mike will be reprising his yeah. role as Sticks Bradley next week. I've already coordinated it with him. Sticks yeah. escaped the mind wipe and is going to be the one helping you guys get everything back in episode two. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that is also the Holy reason uh, the Cool Rolf is Dead shirt will also be available next week to, uh, to celebrate Mike's new guest appearance. And uh, yeah, lots going on. A lot is Holy going shit, on. So how do we all feel about I episode mean, one? Jesus. If the goal was to make us feel in and over our heads, you got it. Yeah. This was I very much a setup. A I am different experience, but <laughs> I felt in over Good my God. head. Yeah, this was, this was a tough session to sort of plot out because it was so much to introduce because it's in an entirely new setting. Uh, but there's, there's a lot that is... Remember... Things will have progressed a month in the time that you guys were just yeah. unaware. So I'll go ahead and say this. Things I'm going to have an empire. The things after me. that you have started in this episode have progressed beyond you, and you will find out exactly how in episode two. So rich. it's not like this was an episode <laughs> where, where nothing happened and it all goes back to square one at the beginning. Things have been set up and you will see, it, your characters will sort of for the first time learn exactly how that plays out next week. Holy shit. I'm going to have an entire army after my fucking head. I promised them the answer to their fucking problem and then disappeared for a <laughs> month. Oh, God. Holy it's going to be a fun time. Oh, someone asked if cool is... If Cool Ralph is Dead is also going to be in sticker form. Uh, I, think, I think that would be a, a really cool sticker. Probably, yeah. I don't know why I wouldn't. Cool Ralph I hadn't thought dead. about it, but I think all the shirts that we have are also stickers, so. Oh, my God. That was <sighs> wow. insane. I am I mean, glad. About it, yeah. That was an insanely good I opener. figured it would be pretty insane, but that was pretty insane. Lots of stuff. Lots and of stuff. And don't hear more about it. On the after show, what, was, mm. what did we call it? I think we came up with a name and I immediately forgot it. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, hey, that's backstage? thematic. That, that's backstage. backstage. I'm gonna write right. that down so I don't forget. We'll find out about it. Backstage to learn more about backspace. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming. This was a, a very a very good opener. I was I was wondering how many people would be here since I didn't do the best job marketing it, but I'm glad people are here. And now that we, it's started, I think we're gonna get even more. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed. I That's had a very fun time with this. I, I there's there's also st like the setup that has started. Whoa, boy! There, if you think this was a lot, the the thing that Glib saw, <sighs> it's it's something. Anyway, I'm not going to say too much about that or anything about that yet. But anyway, that's where we're going to leave off for this oh episode. So I guess we should. Run through all the stuff again. Again, merch store has been updated for season three. The Backspace logo stuff, shirts, hoodies, stickers are all there. Uh, the Now I can officially say what it is. The Necrocephali uh, insignia is available in merch form, and the shirts and hoodies say uh, arms, wings, and fangs on the back. Uh, we have glib pants now, because I had to do that for the bit. So glib pants, not a whole line so of other me. things, but we do now have glib joggers. And for next week, uh. I'm not sure exactly what day it will go up because uh, I don't, I need to finish designing it. But before the episode next week, uh, we will have Cool Rolf is Dead in there to, to celebrate Mike's return as the first guest of season three. Yay. So uh, yeah, that's going to happen. Uh, Momo, you want to plug the Patreon really quick? 
All right, you'll hear us talk about more the after show called Backstage. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we post, I try to post it every Saturday uh, before like 12 p.m. Eastern. So you, that's when you'll see this episode. Oh, I guess I should also yeah. say that, yeah. Um, Backspace is going to be uploaded the exact same way that the previous seasons yeah. were. So on Wednesday on our YouTube channel and our Spotify, uh, links to that will be going through the chat. Uh, yeah, everything's the same there. Oh, people were also asking what the status of, of breakpoints were uh, or was. Breakpoints are going to be handled the exact same way that they were in season mm -hmm. two, which is that they are what we do if there are schedule conflicts and we don't want to skip a week. So there will almost certainly be breakpoints in season three, but like they they aren't planned yet because by their nature, they are not planned that far in advance. Uh, but they will happen. Yeah. I will start getting some ideas together for them. So if, if you're very much looking forward to breakpoints, like they will happen. Just we don't know when because that's what they are. I got to it would be so much fun if guest stars on Breakpoints played alternate versions of all oh, three yeah. of our characters. Oh, yeah, I get to do fun <laughs> like, stuff. Alternate SG, Glib, and Goodbid. That would be so much fun to see I get to do really do. fun stuff with the, uh, yeah. the Backspace Breakpoints, so they will, they will be very enjoyable. Uh, but, yeah, anyone else have any other things to plug? Nathan, you have a new album. It's probably still within the range of you should plug that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I dropped an album. It's like a concept album. It tells a little story. If you got thirty minutes, change your life. Uh, go listen to it. Uh, um, I. It's cool. It's called Tales as a Lore. I already listened to I Don't Get Sleep too much because I have very bad insomnia. <laughs> so it is by far my favorite. Uh, Dude, you should have seen the <laughs> mental state that I was in when I wrote that. Song. You should see the mental state that <laughs> I was in when I wrote the main antagonist for season three. <laughs> That's funny. Also, so if you haven't seen Ooh. Breakpoint, not Breakpoints. Um, Business venture, you should go back yes. and watch Nathan's three shot series. That's, I yeah. think that's our only like aside from the breakpoints, that's like our more consumable yes. like, yeah. serving side. Yes, that campaign. is uh for those who uh, are new, if there's anyone who's new and, and still here, uh this is season three of the show. We have two full seasons available on YouTube. We also have the breakpoints, which are canon one shots. Uh we have the business venture, which is a three shot campaign DM'd by Nathan, mm -hmm. unrelated to everything else. And then we also have the individual sort of segments from Fight Fest, which was an eight-hour yes. PvP event that we did just for fun as mid-season content. It's not canon to anything. It was just for the bit. But we have, like, I think the cast of that over the whole day was 17 people. So it is a ton of a ton of names you will yeah. recognize if you're in any TikTok nerd spaces. And again, non-canon. So if you just want to watch some people playing D&D &D PvP against each other in, like, more consumable segment sizes... That's a good thing to watch as well. That's also where Cool Rolf is Dead came from. If, if people have seen um, seen the main series but not Fight so Fest, funny. it's probably really weird to hear Cool Rolf is Dead. Don't worry about it. It makes sense, I promise. I, I think if you want to watch that specific episode, I'm pretty sure it's called, like, The Vat of Acid. Like, Fight Fest, The Vat of Acid. I think that is what it is. Yeah, I think... Because who was... I know the cast on that was Josie, um, Mike, Joseph... And you, right? And yeah, I was, I was like, yeah. it was it was Momo. Uh, but yeah, I believe that's all I've got. Uh, we can do the after show. So you guys got anything else to say or should we call it a night? That's, that's all it. I got. All right, yeah. fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed episode one. I hope you're all excited and scared for episode two in equal measure. I think it's going to be a great time. Terrified. And we will Terrified. see you all next week. Same time, same place.